Baruch, scribe to Jeremiah, but a prophet in his own right, was given many visions for the end times and preserved as a witness for the revelation generation to be a testimony and a missing puzzle piece for our times, which Yahuwah deemed would be when many would go to and fro and knowledge increased. Daniel 12, 4. Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard and Christian Truthers live stream. My name is Adam Fink. I'm your host. Joined here with Brother Justin from Christian Truthers. Shabbat Shalom, family. Good to see you guys. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back. Or welcome if this is your first time. Tonight, we are continuing our line-by-line -line Berean study of Second Baruch, also known as the Apocalypse of Baruch. Some major points included in this book are the true location of the Ark of the Covenant, confirmations of New Jerusalem, details about the coming judgment and the plagues and or woes, prayers with questions to Yahuwah with important answers, much like we see in 2 Ezra and Job, signs of when the judgment will come, the resurrection, the nature of the resurrected body for the righteous, as in what those bodies will actually do, the literal walking dead, visions of our Messiah, Yahusha, the importance of Torah, and especially in the end times, and much more. Tonight, we will go through chapters 15 through 30. This is part two. But before we get into the reading, Brother Justin, if you would, just a quick little prayer that uh, our eyes and ears be opened to the wonders of his word. Most High Yahuwah, Father, we come before you this night just asking that you would open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, and open our hearts to understand and be conformed to your image. Father, be with us as we read these words tonight. Father, let them sink into our the depths of our soul and our mind and transform us into the image of your Son. And it's in his name we pray, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, brother. Praise well you. said. Well said. So <clears throat> last week in part one, we read and discussed the announcement of the coming destruction of Jerusalem, a short discussion about the heavenly new Jerusalem, some lamentations from Baruch with answers from Yahuwah himself, the destruction of physical Jerusalem and the hiding of the ark and the holy vessels. So before we jump into verse 16, or I'm sorry, chapter 16, I want to, I want to reread chapter 15 because it gives us a little context of, of what comes in, in, uh, in chapter 16 so let me just take a quick little sip um do you want to start off or you want me to start off well if you want i can go ahead and uh take 15 just to okay do you, do you want to start off on 15 you mean Is that what yeah you yeah mean? i just want to okay, reread yeah. 15 because it gives a little t context for 16 and then we'll we'll jump right into yeah, it. yeah definitely definitely okay second baruch chapter 15 and yahuwah oh let me do a screen share you guys can't see it can you <laughs> let's get that going There we go, much better. And Yahweh answered and said unto me, You are rightly astonished regarding the departure of man, but you have not judged well regarding the evils which befall those who sin. And as regards what you have said, that the righteous are carried off and the impious are prospered. And as regards what you have said, man knows not your judgment. On this account hear, and I will speak to you, and hearken, and I will cause you to hear my words. Man would not rightly have understood my judgment unless he had accepted the Torah, and I had instructed him in understanding. But now, because he transgressed wittingly, yea, just on this ground that he know thereof, he shall be tormented. And as regards what you did say, touching the righteous, that on account of them has this world come, so also, again, shall that which is to come, come on their account." For this world is to them a strife and a labor with much trouble, and that accordingly which is to come, a crown with great glory. Amen. Amen. So if you want, just go ahead and uh, now we can just read chapter 16, and then um, I've got a little reading from Second Ezra that really connects into that, which what we see, it says, here, I'm sorry, I'll lock your screen back in. Oops. It's We see that it says... Um, uh, verse 8, for this world is to them a strife and a labor with much trouble, and that accordingly which is to come, a crown with great glory. So go ahead and read uh, chapter 16, which is kind of the same. Yeah, it's a kind of a big one, so buckle up. And, <laughs> I, an <laughs> and I answered and said, O Yahuwah, my Adonai, lo, the years of this time are few and evil, 
And who is able in his little time to acquire that which is measureless? So, like uh, like we've been saying, or like we said quite a, quite often last week, and actually while we were going to Second Ezra, remember there was a lot of times we um, we went uh, actually to Second Baruch to get some confirmations. Um, it just seems, you know, I know these texts were probably written within what maybe 50, 60 years, actually maybe what seventy years of each other, maybe mm -hmm. eighty years. Second Baruch and two Ezra's, that is. So yeah. it's just we see so many. Uh, verses that that complement each other um that i really want to expound on this and it really kind of just hits home that answer that that lo that age-old question like why is life hard why is it why is it such a struggle like you know, we know because we we transgress and whatnot but really at the core of it a full explanation from yah is mm -hmm. really um really well said here in second ezra so i want to read that real quick anything you want to say on 15 and 16 before I, before i uh, no, not yet. Okay. Nope. Okay. All right. Okay, it's 2 Ezra 7, 6 through 16. Another example. There is a city built and set on a plain, and it is full of all good things. But the entrance to it is narrow and set in a precipitous place, so that there is fire on the right hand and deep water on the left. This city built, the city built by the way, is obviously it's New Jerusalem. There, he's... Um, giving an example of so he's saying that there's a city built in obviously you want to get to it but the entrance is set in a narrow and precipitous place right because just like we know that the um uh, the road is narrow right 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 so verse 8 and there is only one path lying between them that is between the fire and the water so that only one man can walk upon that path if now that city is given to a man for an inheritance, how will the heir receive his inheritance unless he passes through the danger set before him? I said, he cannot, Lord. And he said to me, so also is Israel's portion. For I made the world for their sake. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, what had been made was judged. And so the entrances of this world were made nar narrow and sorrowful and toilsome. They are few and evil. That's the exact ver verbiage we just saw in, two, in Second Baruch. Full of dangers and involved in great hardships. But the entrances of the greater world are broad and safe. This is obviously once we're in to eternal life. And really yield the fruit of immortality. Therefore, unless the living pass through the difficult and vain experiences, they can never receive those things that have been reserved for them. And I, I love this, sorry, but now why are you disturbed seeing that you are to perish? And why are you moved seeing that you are mortal? And why have you not considered in your mind what is to come rather than what is now present? So just uh, really kind of just brings it home. That's like, mm -hmm. why are you focusing on the fact that, you know, we all perish? Or why are you focusing on these things? Why can't you focus on what's to come? And I think that's, I think that's a lesson for all of us to, to really glean from, you mm -hmm. know, regardless of what's going on, even as we, plunge face forward into these days of tribulation uh and the great tribulation that's you know either at hand or, or at the door you know i think this is something that we should all just remember no matter what you know oh yeah absolutely man and really that that question and answer are the heart of what we're going to go over tonight even mm -hmm. so it's really a, an awesome way to kind of jump into this study because he asks some of the greatest just he has a, a boldness about him, that's for sure, to ask the questions he asks in the way he asks them. Um, and that really is the heart of it. He's asking, what's going to happen with the righteous? What's going to happen with the, the sinners? And when is this going to happen? How long is it going to last? And where is it going to happen? And, <laughs> and Yah's answers repeatedly kind of confirm what, what was just written there in Second Ezra, the same kind of idea that he has appointed from the beginning of time. Um, every single aspect of what we're playing out right now. And it's just, as that plays out, um, his, 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 basically his, uh, his plan unfolds in front of us. And so what we're going to see that we're going to see how, how he deals with that question tonight. Really cool. Well said, you want to just go ahead and continue. Maybe we'll just, uh, let's see, what are we doing? 16 through 30. So yeah, <clears throat> maybe we'll, uh, well, what's halfway. You're the, it's, well, seven chapters, so 23 would be halfway. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Second Baruch chapter 17. And Yahuwah answered and said unto me, With El Shaddai, account is not taken of much time nor of few years. Uh, just remember real quick, he asked, Baruch asked, uh, 
The years of this time are few and evil, and who is able in his little time to acquire that which is measureless? So here's Yah's answer. With El Shaddai, account is not taken of much time nor of a few years. For what did it profit Adam that he lived 930 years and transgressed that which he was commanded? Therefore, the multitude of time that he lived did not profit him, but brought death and cut off the years of those who were born from him. So he's basically saying, you know, what's, what's the benefit of living this long um, if transgression still brings death, you know? Um, and we're going to see the inverse of that here in the next verse. Or wherein did Moshe suffer loss? So he's saying, and how did Moses suffer? How did he suffer in that he lived only 120 years? And inasmuch as he was subject to him who formed him, he brought the Torah to the seed of Yaakov and lighted a lamp for the nation of Yasharel. I think this is a really very, very important verse here because um, it, it, it again goes into uh, the, the wise and the foolish virgins. Amen. And many, many other. And actually, I, I want to I show a little bit of that real quick, unless you have something you want to mention before I go into it. No, I just I've got a couple of verses uh, just uh, confirming that the Torah is the is the light and <laughs> you you have Proverbs six twenty three up too. We probably have the same ones pulled up. Let me go take ahead, a look. Go ahead. Proverbs six twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> For the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. But I want to go a little farther than that. Okay, so real quick, remember he said he brought the Torah and lighted a lamp. So we're gonna show that's the same thing. Um. Not just through this, but we're going to look a little bit further here. Yeah, we have the same verses. <laughs> Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. Now, what I really want to show real quick, though, is the parable of the ten virgins. I'm going to read you a part of this, and then I'm going to take you through a couple other scriptures, and we'll come back real, real quick just to show how this ties in so well. I'm just going to read this section here first. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom, Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish ones took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise, one, wise ones took oil in jars along with their lamps. Okay, so what I wanted to show is some interesting connecting verses here and show how that ties back into what we're reading here. Um, in Exodus 27.20, it says, Also you are to com command B'nai Israel that they are to bring to you pure olive oil, beaten for the light to cause a lamp to burn continually. All right, so this is where I think it gets really interesting. We have pure olive oil beaten for the light. So olives obviously have to be pressed out and beaten out to get the oil out of them and to cause a lamp to burn continually. So now it brings to question uh, what's with the pure olive reference, right? Well, if we go to uh, Hosea 14, 5 through 9, it says, I will be as the dew unto Israel, and he shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread. And those of us not serene know it, how important the word branches is here. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. Um, they that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do anymore with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise and shall understand these things? Prudent and he shall know them. For the ways of, the, of Adonai are right and the just shall walk in them but the transgressors shall fall therein. So interesting connection here between walking justly, uh, the fruit coming from Adonai, right? And then we have these, these uh, olives, beauty of the olive tree. Now, another connecting verse here. We know that we're referred to as olive branches by Paul and, and, and other places as well. And if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree, or grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. And he goes on to say, um, you know, we could be cut off as well. The the original uh, olive branches can be grafted back in. Uh, so we have this idea now that we're olives, right? Where we are the olive branches, 
and our fruit is the olives that come from our branches. So here's where it gets interesting because we know that olives become, are pressed to make oil, right? They're pressed through trial, through testing, through Yah trying to get us to conform to the image of his son, the Messiah, and we're pressed. It's, that's, that's tribulation for us, just kind of like Baruch just said uh, when we read it a minute ago that, uh, that this world is to us a labor and a strife with much trouble, right? But what's coming next is a crown of great glory. But to, for now, this world is a strife and labor to those to the righteous. It's it's difficult to be here because it's it's we're constantly tested and tempted and pulled away from walking in the right way. And that is where that pressing comes from. And here we see in 2 Corinthians 1 8, where uh, Paul is speaking, and he says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. So just huge tribulation here. And then if we just go and just do a, a Bible keyword word search and look for try, we see how the Most High tries us. He says, I, Adonai, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord in limitations. Daniel 11.35, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, pure olive oil. Remember that? Pure olive oil. Where'd it go? It was, uh, no, nope. there it is. Pure olive oil, oil beaten for the light. Remember that? So back to that. And I will bring a third part through the fire, and I will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried, Zechariah 13, 9. So we just go on, just look up the word try, and you'll see, look, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort that it is. Um, so going all the way back to here, we can see that when you're talking about oil, and lamps, and burning, and olives. We're talking about uh, obedience to the commandments despite the world's temptations and tribulation against it, walking in the ways of Yah despite all the obstacles that surround it. Doing so in the pressing and trying of our faith creates oil, gives us the oil to put in our lamps, and allows us to keep our lamps burning just like this. Command Benai Israel that they are to bring you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause a lamp to burn continually. This is a physical representation of a spiritual truth that we see right here. And of course, right here in Baruch. Amen. Amen, brother. Well said. So um, that brings us back to this last verse here in Baruch, right? Where he says, Moshe... Uh, was he brought the Torah to the seed of Yaakov and lighted a lamp for the nation of Yashiro. Did you want to add anything, Adam? Yeah, well, it's awesome. <laughs> we had the exact same notes um, as far as the, the, the verses, and you actually had a few more, uh, so praise Yah. There's one thing, though, um, I'd like to add, and it was interesting is, well, and by the way, uh, at, as soon as this ends, we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be doing a Torah portion um, after this on a separate live stream. So I'll let you guys know when we end and to jump over to the next one if you want to stay with. But if you stay if you stay with the, the Torah portion tonight, we're going to find out that part of the Torah portion and numbers we're reading is in regards to um, lighting the, the, the menorah in the, the temple, in the, in the, uh, the, te the tent of meeting. Wow. And what's interesting about that is, you know, it's a seven-branched seven candlestick. And I'm actually just going to share a little bit from Revelation because it's really interesting. That it ties in to all this. And I thought it's it, pretty cra pretty crazy that it comes up tonight, huh, Justin? Yeah. It's not surprising, though. No, it's not. So um, Re Revelation, let's see. Uh, we, we all know that. I just want to read this, though. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. 
Verse 10, I was in the spirit on Yahuwah's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks is one like the son, like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the pass with a golden girdle. Hey on, son. And his head, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun signed. Son, hang on one second. Sorry. No problem. Oh, let's see what verse was I? Okay. And when I saw him, I, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, "Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death." Write these things with that which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right, right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So, sorry, I got a little long-winded there. I should have probably just picked out a few verses on this. But what's interesting is the seven-branched candlestick that we see in the temple, right? Like, mm -hmm. like this right here. Is what is what John saw, right? The seven yeah. branch candlestick. And so, what's interesting is that kind of ties in to. Uh, actually, I'll just I wanted to keep going to Matthew five, and it really it really confirms, you know, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Oops, right. oops, where am I? Did I? So yeah, so we Justin already read in Leviticus twenty four. Actually, I think he read it from out of Exodus. But um, to bring on the pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamps to burn continually, right? Right. So we know the command is a lamp. The law is light. We just he just read that. But here, which is interesting, kind of ties us all together. Matthew five fourteen through nineteen. Ye, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And then, of course, I can't uh, stop there. Uh, what Yeshua says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So I just think that really kind of just ties in, though, that, mm -hmm. you know, the the light was supposed to burn continually in the temple, right? And we know that the Torah is light, right? So right. Torah should be within our heart continually. And as Yeshua said in another passage, he says, out of the out of the abundance of the heart, so the mouth speaketh. And the, I think the more and more, the longer and longer that we're on this path in uh, not not just in faith, but in, in truth as well, in obedience, it's literally just changing how we talk. It's changing everything because the 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 light is, you know, is burning continually within us, which is the the temple of the Holy Spirit. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And if you know, if. If the commandment is a, a lamp and the Torah is a light, then uh, we we hold that candle up instead of hiding it under a bushel when we walk in Torah and when we represent the Most High through our, our actions. So yeah, it's it's constantly a, a a a kind of a struggle to keep the candle up despite the the world trying to put it out and put you down. And um, yeah. Amen. That's uh, kind of what that scripture is speaking to. Like, why would you hide the light under a bushel? The only reason you would do that is to avoid the, uh, the, the, uh, the tribulation that comes with it. Um, you know, and that we're called to, to go ahead and accept that now. Uh, and we're going to see 
that doing so is beneficial to us in eternity. Amen. And uh, Donna in the chat, Donna Flintage, is that right? Oh yeah, Donna Flintke. Is that the that's the Donna that won last week? Yeah, that's her. Oops, wrong wrong one. Uh, she reminded me of Deuteronomy six, which I want to uh, I want to just read real quick. Yeah, Donna crushed me and others <laughs> on Bible trivia last week. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see where where was it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> and thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently to unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So it's literally like when you wake up, when you walk around, when you're just sitting in your house, when you're lying down, you know, they need they should be, you know, when it, and especially, you know, if Torah, you know, is to be written on our hearts, right? This should be in our on our hearts continually. We should be uh, thinking about his law continually. Mm -hmm. Um and it's just, again, uh, for those of you that have been with us for a while, you, you already know this, but it's just really interesting that, once again, that his commandments, right, they they are the opposite, in a good way, of course, opposite of the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is, a, is, a, um, you know, is upon your hand or on your forehead, and we see that God's commands are also to be a sign upon our hand and frontlets between our eyes. Our frontlets between our eyes is our forehead, so our thoughts and our actions, right? So it's really interesting. Thanks, Donna, for, for mentioning that. Yeah, and uh, that's actually interesting. Interesting that uh, that ties into the testament of Judah that I just just came out. Um, so, for those of you guys who haven't seen it yet, uh, I just posted the fourth installment of the t testament of the twelve patriarchs, which is the testament of Judah here on the Christian Truthers channel. And he actually says in this uh, in this book that all of our deeds and all of our actions are actually written upon our own hearts whether it be good or bad and so we are actually we're actually uh, accused and convicted and tried in judgment based on what's written on our own hearts based on what we've done what we've thought about what we've said and done so it's interesting how that ties back into uh, that scripture because if we are doing torah and studying torah and thinking about torah and meditating on a day or night day and night we are writing it upon our hearts. So very, very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, so what we just saw here in 17 was essentially, um, you, you know, Baruch is asking, you know, what's the, basically, why would you allow bad things to happen to good people and vice versa? And, uh, you know, how much time is necessary to acquire that which is measureless. And then Yahuwah comes in and tells him, you know, it's not the amount of time that you live that matters. It's what you do with the time that you have that matters. And so we get into uh, chapter 18 here, which is very short. And it says, and I answered and said, he that lighted has taken from the light. And there are but a few that have imitated him. But those many whom he has lighted have taken from the darkness of Adam and have not rejoiced in the light of the lamp. And so uh, he's referring back to the fact that the Most High told him that uh, Moshe lighted a lamp for the nation of Yasharel. And it's saying essentially that uh, there are very few people like Moses who have been able to, to kind of carry that torch and, and carry that light. And it says that um, even those whom he has lighted, which would be, uh, you know, Abraham slash Yahweh, however you want to look at it, even those who were were given light by Abraham have also taken from the darkness of Adam and have not rejoiced in the light of the lamp. So he's saying they're still continuing in sin. Let me uh, tell you what, let me just, um, let me just read real quick a little passage from, you know, I have to read a passage from two Ezra that goes along with this. Of course. I hope you guys don't get tired of it, but it is what it is. I don't know how we could get tired of two Ezra, man. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, 2 Ezra 9, starting at 27. And after seven days, as I lay on the grass, my heart was troubled again as it was before. 
And my mouth was open, and I began to speak before the Most High and said, O Yahuwah, thou didst show thyself among us to our fathers in the wilderness when they came out from Egypt and when they came into the untrodden and unfruitful wilderness. And thou didst say, Hear me, O Israel, and give heed to my words, O descendants of Jacob. For behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring forth fruit in you, and you shall be glorified through it forever. But though our fathers received the law, they did not keep it and did not observe the statutes. Yet the fruit of the law did not perish, for it could not because it was thine. Yet those who received it perished because they did not keep what had been sown in them. And behold, it is the rule that when the ground has received seed or the sea a ship or any dish food, and when it, has, when it happens that what was sown or what was launched or what was put in it is destroyed, they are destroyed, but the things that held them remain. Yet with us it has not been so. For we who have received the law and sinned will perish, as well as our heart which received it. The law, however, does not perish, but remains in its glory. Amen. Amen. And thus, the reason why so many of these books were removed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know, they don't jive with the uh, modern theological understanding of what's necessary and what's important for the end times. Um, when you have when you divide it into this this dispensational idea where we're in a new time and those things don't matter, you have to take out the books that tell you that even in the end times the Torah still matters. So, you know, if if you want to talk about conspiracy, I think that's an interesting one right there. Um, so love diving back into the meat of the word that was possessed by our great grandparents even. Uh, where we see clearly that it does matter all the way to the end. It matters completely. Okay. Um, we'll go back into chapter 19 here. All right. And he answered and said unto me. Okay, so the question he asked him, or the statement basically that Baruch made, was uh, that even those that Moses gave light to have taken from the darkness of Adam, and they're still not rejoicing in the light of the lamp. And he answered and said unto me, Wherefore, at that time, he appointed for them a covenant and said, Behold, I have placed before you life and death. And he called heaven and earth to witness against them. Now, what he's uh, actually, the Most High is referencing here is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Uh, and it's, it's in 15 and it's in 19. I call heavens and earth to witness about you today. But I'm going to read this section up here, actually. It says, See, I have set before you today life and good and death and evil. What I am commanding you today is to love Adonai your Yah, I mean your Elohim, to walk in his ways and to keep his mitzvot, his Torah, his, instru his instructions, his statutes and his ordinances. Then you will live and multiply and Adonai your, your Elohim will bless you in the land you are going in to possess. But if your hearts turn away from away and you do not listen, but are drawn away and bow down to other gods and worship them, I tell you today that you will certainly perish. So we go in. And then he says, I call to witness against you, heaven and earth. So that's where it's exactly what he's referencing right here. For he knew that his time was but short, but that heaven and earth endure always. But after his death, they sinned and transgressed. He's talking about Moshe again. After his death, they sinned and transgressed, though they knew that they had the Torah reproving them and the light in which nothing could err. Also, the spheres which testify and me. Real quick, I, I would love – I wish we had a um, an interlinear on this. I would love to see what that what that word sphere is actually was, the root word. Yeah, unfortunately. Really, it was translated with bias of you know what we understood the cosmology to be pre-2015. Right, right. I think it was written in a Syriac language. Right. We'll have an interlinear Syriac to go back and check out this word. But um, again – it's it goes back to the kind of the age old arguments about about the um, luminaries from what from where we're sitting the luminaries certainly do look like spheres um, at least they appear that way from from where we're at and the luminaries uh, do testify right uh, to the goodness and greatness of the Most High so which I, I just want to before, before we jump uh, I just want to share uh, so yeah rightly so Justin showed um, Deuteronomy thirty uh, and then while we're here uh, just real quick. Uh, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. 
Therefore, choose life that both you and I see may live. And this is what Paul was talking about. You know, when people say that the law was like a curse and like it was bad and we, we just need to run, run away from it you know, all that, that just garbage teaching that's been perpetrated the last, I don't know, a couple thousand years, I guess. Um, but this is what he's talking about when he says the, you know, the law being a curse, you know, if we break it, it's a curse, right? And, and Yeshua took away that curse uh, for us. But, you know, as for, as for the, uh, the, um, the spheres which testify, uh, it's very clear here in Psalm 19, 1 through 3. I think this is the clearest verse you can get with it. It says, the heavens declare the glory of Yah, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The firmament being this hard, the, the, it's called rakia. It's a, it's a hard, it's a hard surface, right? Mm-hmm. But it says here, up there, the skies above, it says, day unto day they utter speech, right? They speak, and mm -hmm. night unto night they show knowledge. So there's wisdom to be shown above. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So I've said this. I used to. Say, I, I said a lot. I said this a lot a couple years ago, leading up to uh, that September twenty third, twenty seventeen, um, Revelation twelve sign. But you know, if if Yah wants to speak to all his children all across you know, his, his geocentric earth, right? What language does he speak? It's, right. it's in the stars. Right. And we right. know that we know that there's a lot of scripture in, there's a lot of scriptures against astrology. Right. Uh, but a, biblical astronomy is quite different than astrology. Um, you know, and we know that, but the wise men, they were able to tell the birth of Yeshua by the stars and, they have mm -hmm. that whole story and everything, but it's just it's just really confirming here that you know that the stars are the stars do testify and what it says here the spheres which testify you know in me so it's a witness witness in the stars if you will, amen amen. I got to just give uh, Bauman eighty two a quick shout out because he gave us our our weekly boom Shabbat alaka Shabbat alaka laka right uh, amen Great. yeah. Um, by the way, thanks again, mods, for uh, all you guys do. The last couple, last week, I think, it, last two weeks were pretty crazy, and um, we're gonna have to start finding a way to pay these people if it gets worse. Cause <laughs> they're really working their their tails off in there. All right, uh, let's go to uh, back to Second Baruch. We're in chapter nineteen, and here we go. Also, the spheres which testify and me. Now, regarding everything that is, it is I that judge. This is Yah talking. But do not take counsel in your soul regarding these things, nor afflict yourself because of those which have been. For now it is the consummation of time that should be considered, whether of business or of prosperity or of shame, and not the beginning thereof. So he's saying, pay attention to what's going on right now, and don't grieve yourself over what has already been. Because if a man be prospered in his beginnings and shamefully entreated in his old age, he forgets all the prosperity that he had. And again, if a man is shamefully entreated in his beginnings and that his end is prospered, he remembers not again his evil entreatment. And again, hearken, though each one were prospered all that time, all the time from the day on which death was decreed against those who transgress and in his end was destroyed, in vain would have been everything. Amen. That's uh, that's really deep if you think about it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of giving an example of like, you know, if a man, you know, if in his beginnings, uh, like let's just say his his youth or his early years is is treated, you know, just horribly, but then and you know, and obviously life is horrible. But in the second part of his life, you know, he's got abundance or he's prosperous or he's happy. He forgets all that time before. And if it's the opposite, you know, if they they you know someone were to grow up with happiness and you know when he's old he has sorrow he forgets all that happiness well you can like you can kind of apply that to those that have eternal life and don't you can look at the wicked you know and there's so many times where like the people of yah that are suffering look around at the wicked you know especially at you know ezra that was in babylon he's like i'm looking around he's like yeah i'm looking around and these people don't keep your commandments and why do they you know why do they have charge over us so it's like even though they may live in in plenty and they may be happy and joyful you know if they haven't you know, if they haven't believed or they haven't kept the commands, they don't have eternal life. You know, all that, all that happiness they they had they had before, um, you know, it's all gone because all they have is sorrow now. And right. even if we have a full life of sorrow, just horrible life, just evilly entreated, or 
you know, let's say, you know, I have a child that has a deformity or, or, um, you know, a form of, um, mental retardation or whatever it may be, you know, who it may be horrible in this life, but if they have eternal life, you know, who's going to remember all this before, you know what I mean? Exactly. So it's like, it's like, Yah has the last word, you know, it's like, we can sit here and complain and complain, you know, but he's like, in, in his mind, he knows, you know, he knows, you know, who's going to have eternal life. So he's like, you know, just relax. It's, I know you're, I know it's tough and this is the position I have you in, but you have no idea what's next. And, and when that time comes, you're going to even going to remember all this stuff from before. So it's like, I, I just, I feel like that's really deep right there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it ties into another verse. Uh, what was the, you probably know off the top of your head. Uh, it says not to worry about the judgment of sinners, but rather the, uh, the fate of the righteous, right? The reward of the righteous. Yeah. That's yeah. It's in two Ezra. I think it's chapter seven. It says, um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, um, let's see. It is, you know, yeah, that's a really good verse to pull up. I, I want to, uh, I want to show that real quick. Yeah. That's a good one. It's yeah. Two Ezra seven. It looks like around the twenties. Hmm. Thought I found it, but I guess I didn't. If you want to keep reading, maybe I'll find it. Okay. All right, we'll jump back into uh, chapter 20 here. Well, Adam pulls that up. All right, Second Baruch chapter 20. This is still the most high speaking. Okay, I just found it. You want me to just do it real quick? Yeah, so, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I knew I'd find it as soon as you started. <laughs> All right, sorry. It's two edges, nine. Um. Let's see. Let's start here. Just start at verse seven. Ah, uh, well, I'll start verse nine. Then those who have then those who have now abused my ways shall be amazed, and those who have rejected them, this is talking about the, his commandments, with contempt shall dwell in torments. For as many as did not acknowledge me in their lifetime, although they received my benefits, and as many as scorned my law while they still had freedom and did not understand but despised it while an opportunity of repentance was still open to them, these must in torment acknowledge it after death. Therefore, do not continue to be curious as to how the ungodly will be punished, but inquire how the righteous will be saved to those to whom the age belongs and for whose the age, I'm sorry, for whose sake the age was made. Amen. Amen. And by the way, um, people are like shooting off fireworks, so I apologize if you guys, did you, have you been hearing the bangs? I haven't heard it over here, okay. no. Okay, maybe my microphone's not picking up. All right, cool. <laughs> See, someone's either mowing the lawn you know, <laughs> at, 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 at nighttime or they're shooting off fireworks now. Yeah. Anyways. That's always something. Or the cat's attacking your leg, right? Right, right. <laughs> was that you, by the way? By the way, was that you who, who put that one of the problems you have on the word cloud during the Bible qu trivia quiz night? Um, we did that word cloud, you know, where like everyone put in the things that they are struggling with and it made this word cloud in the, in the Bible quiz last night. Someone put my cat attacking me as one of their problems. No, I should have. Cause that's, literally, <laughs> that is literally like one of the, my only, my, that's like first world problems, right? Oh my yeah. It's always using my leg as a tree stump. Um, yeah, I no, was... I didn't. So someone else has the same problem. <laughs> must be common among the, uh, the not serene. That is funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chapter 20. Therefore behold, the days come and the times shall hasten more than the former. And the seasons shall speed on more than, than those that are past, and the years shall pass more quickly than the present years. Now, this is a really interesting concept that I think all of us can relate to um, in one way or another. I did a little digging. I didn't have a lot of time before we got started tonight. And there's not a whole lot that I could find that corroborates this statement in the 66 book canon. But I remember in Enoch, there's a very similar statement made. I couldn't I couldn't find it in the few minutes I had, but fascinating, fascinating that the years shall pass more quickly than the present years, talking about the end times. And it kind of brings to mind, uh, if not for the if the days were not cut short, uh, none would survive. But for the elect's sake, those days will be cut short. It kind of 
makes me wonder about that even. Sure. If it means the door, the day itself is act literally shorter. But uh, hard to know. All right. Therefore, have I now taken away Zion that I may the more speedily visit the world in its season? Now, therefore, hold fast in your heart everything that I command you and seal it in the recesses of your mind. And then I will show you the judgment of my might and my ways which are unsearchable. Go, therefore, and sanctify yourself seven days and eat no bread, nor drink water, nor speak to anyone. Uh, okay, verse 6. And afterwards, come to that place, and I will reveal myself to you and speak true things with you. And I will give you the commandment regarding the method of the times, for they are coming, and tarry not. Amen. Amen. I, um, a couple things there. I, I think it's just, I think it's really, really cool. You know, I, I think even though it was there the whole time, I think it was when we read first Adam and Eve that it really dawned on us that that was Yahusha always in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, from in the garden, you know, uh, asking uh, Adam, where are you? You know, walking in the cool of the day in the garden and, and um, you know, right. he, he formed Adam and, and, you know, put him to sleep and took the rib out. He was, uh, I believe it was him on Mount Sinai, you know, the thunderings and the lightnings. I believe he was the fire by night and the cloud by day. I believe he was the, uh, the angel and with, with Joshua. I believe he was the fire and the burning bush. You know, that's what's. That's what's it's so um, so rough that you know that Jews reject him you know right now, but I just think it's so interesting here that that's this is you know this is Yeshua speaking to Baruch right now, and and I just think it's so amazing you know he's talking about you know himself you know just like when he was talking to Adam you know about coming back or, or coming as a man you know yeah yeah exactly I'm actually trying know, to pull up oh, go ahead go ahead no no you go ahead I'm trying to pull up. Uh, angel of the Lord in, uh, and I haven't to use that, that terminology in order to do a, a Bible keyword search. But if you pull up the angel of the Lord or angel of Adonai, uh, you find that it was the angel of the Lord, so to speak, who was, um, in the burning bush. It says, right. it says it was the angel of the Lord who was in the pillar of fire that was leading the Israelites out of Egypt as well. Um, and then actually in the ascension of Isaiah, uh, you kind of get that same, kind of the same picture that the, uh, uh, you know, being an, being an angel, well, is it, is it Baruch that describes the nature of the body of an angel yes. like glorified? But yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that probably next week, actually. Right. So uh, being an angel is more of a description of the, the characteristic, the, the physical characteristics of a, a being. And I know in the in the spiritual realm, the word physical might not be the best word to use, but from what we have understanding of, it's the only thing I can word I can use. The physical characteristics of humans is different than the physical characteristics and the makeup and the nature of a glorified being. Um, and actually in the first book of Adam and Eve, we found out that they actually were wrapped in light uh, before they fell and then they lost that light when they fell, and actually it says that because the Most High knew they were going to fall, he gave them uh, gave them flesh and bone underneath that light. Uh, whereas with Lucifer, um, he was completely made of, of light at one time. And so when darkness entered into him, it spread throughout his entire being and he became consumed by darkness. Whereas we weren't completely consumed by darkness, uh, we just, the light that was around us was gone. So the reason I bring all this up is because um, being a description of the description of being an angel is not so much a uh, a status or hierarchy um, in and of itself. Just because something or someone is an angel doesn't automatically make them lower or higher uh, than any other person or whatever. Um, it, it's only a description of their makeup of like what how they are, right? So if we're going to receive glorified bodies, and according to Enoch and according to our Messiah, Yahusha, we're going to be like the angels when we're resurrected, we're given our glorified bodies. Um, and we're going to, and we know that Yeshua was the firstborn among many brethren, we're going to be like him, then um, it wouldn't be too surprising to know that um, 
is in terms of describing the Messiah in his physical form, um, it, you can use that description as being an angel, not not lowering him in any way. He's still the son of the Most High, seated at the right hand of the Father. But when we see the angel of the Lord in the burning bush, the angel of the Lord, or the angel of Adonai in the pillar of fire, it, it really points to uh, the Messiah. It really points to the word of the Lord also, which, which those, two, those two are kind of used synonymously in many, in many cases. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, this is this is a little bit of a rabbit trail. I'm going to apologize ahead of time, but I think it's really interesting. Um, I mean, in speaking of this, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because, you know, I, again, I believe this is uh, this is Yahusha. Not the father, but Yahusha speaking and has been and has been speaking since the beginning. John 5, 34 through 38, but I receive not the testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither, neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So how can this verse be possible if that was the Father on on Mount Sinai, right? How is right. that possible? Because I want to I want to read just the next part in Exodus. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom ye from he hath sent him ye believing not. So um I just want to prove real quick, just real quickly that that was Yahusha. This is Exodus 20. This is right after the giving of the commandments. And all the people saw thunderings and lightnings and the noise of a trumpet and the mountains smoking. When the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, Elohim has come to you to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where Yahuwah was. And Adonai said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Right? So, again, for for we know that, that Yahushua does not lie. Period. So, you know, for him to say that, he, that no one has heard the voice of the Father, right? You know, for that statement to be true, well then, again, who was who was in this thick darkness, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll, I'll just save some time. I was just going to read uh, more of Deuteronomy, which basically just spells out that, you know, that it says that Elohim spoke, right? For who is there of all flesh that heard the voice of the living Elohim speaking out of the midst of the fire, fire as we have and lived, right? So that, I think that just proves right there that that was Yahusha the whole time. Uh, and speaking to Adam, speaking to Seth, to Enoch, to everybody. I just, yeah, it's kind of cool. Actually, I just remember too. Another witness to um, the the angel idea is in this video, the hidden prophecy of Joshua revealed. Also on the Christian Truthers channel, I'll put the link in the uh, chat for you right now. But we see that uh, pretty conclusively that it was Yahusha, it was the Messiah who showed up and actually led the army of Joshua into Jericho. Which of course makes sense since Joshua's entire life points to the life of the Messiah and right. what he will do in the millennial uh, kingdom. So very, very interesting. Yeah, amen, bro. Yeah, that's a great that's a great video. Praise Yah. All right. Um, all right, so chapter twenty one. And I went thence and sat in the valley of Ki So just, by the way, I'm sorry to pause you. He told him to go and basically fast for seven days, sanctify yourself, don't eat anything, and I'm going to come reveal myself to you uh, after seven days. You know, and just that, that's something we just continue to see, you know, these prophets, you know, before something is revealed to them, they're fasting, you mm -hmm. know. So while we might not be waiting for, you know, uh, Yahusha to come down and speak with us or, or an angel to, to speak with us, you know, if we're in the midst of trials or tribulation, you know, it's something that we've continued to say, um, you know, seek the father, see if, uh, see if that's something that you're supposed to be doing to have a breakthrough. Amen. 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 
All right. And I went thence and sat in the valley of Kidron in the cave of the earth. And I sanctified my soul there and I ate no bread, yet I was not hungry. And I drank no water, yet I thirsted not. And I was there till the seventh day as he had commanded me. And afterwards I came to that place where he had spoken with me. And it came to pass at sunset that my soul took much thought. And I began to speak in the presence of El Elohim and said, O you that have made the earth, hear me that have fixed the expanse by your word. Fixed expanse. <laughs> and have made firm the height of the heaven. Firm. By the Ruach that have called from the beginning of the world that which did not yet exist, and they obey you. You that have commanded the air by your nod, and have seen those things which are to be as those things which you are doing. He's, this is an interesting statement too, by the way. It says that he sees those things which are to be as things which you are doing. So he, he's carrying out his plans in the future at the same time that He's speaking with him is basically what he's saying. Very interesting. You that rule with great thought, the hosts that stand before you, also the countless holy beings, which you did make from the beginning of flame and fire, which stand round about your throne, you rule with indignation. To you only does this belong that you should do forth with whatever you wish. Who caused the drops of rain to rain by number upon the earth? and alone know the consummation of the times before they come. Have respect unto my prayer, for you alone are able to sustain all who are, and those who have passed away, and those who are to be, those who sin, and those who are righteous as living and being past finding out. For you alone do live immortal and past finding out, and know the number of mankind. And if in time many have sinned, yet others not a few have been righteous, you know where you preserve the end of those who have sinned or the consummation of those who have been righteous. For if there were this life only, which belongs to all men, nothing could be more bitter than this. And that actually ties in. True. What is that? I'd say how true that is. If I mean, if this was it, you know, man. Cruel joke, right? Right. <laughs> For of what profit is strength that turns to sickness or fullness of food that turns to famine? Or beauty that turns to ugliness for the nature of man is always changeable for what we were formerly now we no longer are and what we now are shall not afterwards remain for if a consummation had not been prepared for all in vain would have been their beginning but regarding everything that comes from you do inform me and regarding everything about which i ask you do enlighten me how long will that which is corruptible remain? And how long will the time of mortals be prospered? And until what time will those who transgress in the world be polluted with much wickedness? A lot of questions there. <laughs> Command, therefore, in mercy. So he's telling, this is a really interesting part here. He tells him, he asks Yah to just go ahead and do what he's going to do. Command, therefore, in mercy and accomplish all that you said you would bring that your might may be known to those who think that your long suffering is weakness. So he's saying those who think that you're being patient, the fact that you're being patient is actually the is actually proof that you're not there. It's actually proof that you can't do anything. People are saying that you can't do anything, that you're weak. Um, and they, they think that the fact that you're long suffering is actually weakness. They're confusing your kindness for weakness is what they're doing. So he's saying, uh, Make your might known to these people that think that your long suffering is weakness. And show to those who know not that everything that has befallen us and our city until now has been according to the long suffering of your power. Because on account of your name, you have called us a beloved people. Bring to an end, therefore, henceforth, mortality. And reprove accordingly the angel of death. And let your glory appear. And let the might of your beauty be known. And let Sheol be sealed, so that from henceforth it may not receive the dead. And let the treasuries of souls restore those which are enclosed in them. For there have been many years like those that are desolate from the days of Abraham and Yitzchak and Yaakov, and of all those who are like them, who sleep in the earth, on whose account you did say that you had created the world. And now 
Quickly show your glory and do not defer what has been promised by you. And when I had completed the words of this prayer, I was greatly weakened. Wow. I understand. I understand Baruch. I mean, he's basically kind of like how we are like, you know, please come, you know, cause we know we're waiting for the return of Yeshua. Right. And it's like, come, you know, it's, what are you waiting for? Please come now. Amen. Amen. Has everything been fulfilled? What are we waiting for? <laughs> I know. So I get, I get, I get his lamentation. I really do. Me too. Me too. And um, do you think that two that there's a two Ezra's pairing with this? Just take uh, a wild guess. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna read it real quick. I'll say it real quick. It's actually it's 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 a it's a few verses. Just bear with me. But really, it just I think it just accents this so well, and it just shows the deep mourning. That these men had and honestly i think we should all have the same kind of heart right yeah. we're, i think we were reading it last week weren't we there was a there was a, a verse uh last week that we we're talking about how you know talked about those that that grieved over zion right that they were um you know that they were rewarded or something i can't remember oh it, it was yeah isaiah 61 right and it was like you know he he, he gives um you know, he gives joy to, joy to those that mourn. And just like Yeshua said in uh, in Matthew 5, you know, uh, was it blessed are they that mourn for they shall be uh, comforted. Comforted, right, right. So, and that's what these these men are doing. They're, they're mourning for their people. They're mourning for what's, what's uh, you know, to come. 2 Ezra 5, and I said, speak, my Lord. And he said to me, are you greatly disturbed in mind over Israel? Or do you love him more than his maker does? And I said, Hell, my Adonai, but my because of my grief I have spoken. For every hour I suffer agonies of heart while I strive to understand the way of the Most High and to search out part of his judgment. And he said to me, You cannot. And I said, Why not, my Adonai? Then why was I born? Or why did my did not my mother's womb become my grave, that I might not see the travail of Jacob and the exhaustion of the people of Israel? He said to me, Count up for me those who have not yet, and you're going to see, uh, Justin, you're going to see a lot of the same language here and a lot of the same concepts. Count up for me those who have not yet come and gather for me the scattered raindrops and make the withered flowers bloom again for me. Open for me the closed chambers, right? He was talking about this, the chambers of Sheol. He was talking about those who have not yet come. Right. Bring forth for me the winds and shut up, shut up in them or show me the picture of a voice which is now actually possible in these, in these times. And then I will explain to you the travail that you seek to they ask to understand. And I said, Oh, sovereign, I don't know. Who was able to know these things except he whose dwelling is not with men. As for me, I am without wisdom. And how can I speak concerning the things which thou hast asked me? He said to me, just as you cannot do one of the things that were mentioned. So you cannot discover my judgment or the goal of the love that I have promised my people. And I said, yet behold, O Adonai, thou dost have charge over those who are alive at the end. But what will those do who were before us or we or those who will come after us? He said to me, I shall liken my judgment to a circle. Just as for those who are last, there is no slowness. So for those who are first, there is no haste. Then I answered and said, couldst thou not have created at one time those who have been and those who are and those who will be that thou mightest show that judgment sooner so the same thing ezra's like can you just bring your judgment please <laughs> right and uh he replied to me and said the creation cannot make more haste than the creator neither can the world hold at one time those who have been created in it and i said how hast thou said to thy servant that thou will certainly give life at one time to thy creation? If therefore all creatures will live at one time and the creation will sustain them, it might even now be able to support all them that are present at one time. So he's trying to like, he's trying to like catch the most high in his words, right? He's like, well, you're saying that you can't have everybody be born right now. So the, the judgment will hasten. Well, how is that possible when you said that you would give life to everyone at the same time, right? So right. <laughs> he's trying to like use his words against him, not like you know, not in a sassy way. But he's like, I don't understand, right? And then right. He, says, he said to me, "Ask a woman's womb and say to it, if you bear ten children, why one after another? Request it therefore to produce ten at one time." I said, "Of course it cannot, but only each in its own time." He said to me, "Even so, have I given the womb of the earth to those who, from time to time, are sown in it?" Amen. So. Just not not verbatim, but just another kind of parallel lamentation that has some similar wording there. That I just think is just fascinating. It's it's so cool. I think I really like studying these books 
side by side because it's like it's like studying it's like studying Matthew 24, Luke 21 and and Mark 13 all at the same time, which is the it's the same scene and you know it's it's when the uh, disciples asked him about the the um, the end of the age and his return, right? So you get three different um, kind of views at it, and and each each version has like a little more than the other one didn't, right? So right. If you if you study all three, you get the whole breadth of it. So I feel like on a lot of these, when you study two Ezra's and two Baruch at the same time, you get the full understanding uh, of it. So yeah, Anyways. yep, amen, amen, and and you know like. The context is so powerful now, especially since, you know, the things that we're we're able to at least take a guess at interpreting as it pertains to end times prophecy. The, these are things that a hundred years ago would have literally made absolutely no sense to most people, but because of the way things have evolved, uh, developed technologically and sociologically uh, and globally. We can start to, you know, like like you said, when we piece all the, the puzzle pieces together at the same time, we get more context from the word. And it just, I think the timing of that is perfect right now because, like I said, a lot of this stuff would have been pretty much useless to generations past uh, just because they wouldn't have made any sense. They couldn't possibly have interpreted it um, without without under being in the right time in the right place. And so right. it's really interesting to see how Baruch is trying to rush him, you know, and, and Ezra um, trying to rush him to to go ahead and take take what's his and, and do his thing. And he's kind of falling victim to that same mentality. He doesn't really understand what is to come to pass and what needs to come to pass for Yahuwah's namesake. So very interesting. It is. All right. Uh, chapter 22. So keep in mind, he just he just asked him to do all these things, um, Baruch. He told him to to close Sheol, let your glory appear, uh, restore the souls which are enclosed, like basically like you know resurrection. Like go ahead and go ahead and do it. Let's do it right now. Let's get this thing on the. Let's just get this thing going. You know, <laughs> uh, chapter twenty two. And it came to pass after these things that lo, the heavens were opened, and I saw, and power was given to me, and a voice was heard from on high, and it said unto me. Baruch, Baruch, why are you troubled? He who travels by a road but does not complete it, or who departs by sea but does not arrive at the port, can he be comforted? Or he who promises to give a present to another but does not fulfill it, is it robbery? Or he who sows in the earth but does not reap its fruit in its season, does he not lose everything? Or he who plants a plant, unless it grows to the time suitable to it, does he who planted it expect to receive fruit from it? And this is a this is it should be coming real clear by now once you hear that statement. Mm -hmm. Or a woman who has conceived, there you go, second Ezra, if she brings forth untimely, does she not assuredly slay her infant? There you go. There you have it, guys. The it word is. says it's an infant, not a fetus. Or he who builds a house, if he does not roof it and complete it. Can it be called a house? Tell me that first. I love it. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's like this. It's this book to Ezra and Job, man. They're just deep. It's like you've got men that are just pouring their heart out with these hard questions. Like, tell me. I don't get it. It's so, it's so, it's so funny, man. It's so funny. He's so incredibly long suffering. Like, he doesn't have to answer any of this, uh -huh. you know, what I mean? and just the fact that he's like, <laughs> he finds such a beautiful and powerful and deep way to explain concepts to us that we can, we can kind of grasp. We're like, Oh, that's right. You know, Oh, I get it. So there's like, we have to wait because that's the way you made things to work. And he's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> very, very interesting. Yeah, right. that's true. All right. So do you want to, um, Start here, or you want me to get 23 as well? Um, I'll tell you what, if you go ahead and read 23, because I've got a little good chunk of reading to go along with 23. Okay, great. Just go ahead and finish it. All right. And I answered and said, Not so, O Yahuwah, my Adonai, for as you have not forgotten the people who now are and those who have passed away, 
So I remember those who are appointed to come. We just we just read that in two Ezra uh, yeah. a minute ago. <laughs> That's right. He's like, oh yeah, I just remember. There's still people that are going to come. <laughs> and he answered and said unto me, Why therefore are you troubled about that which you know not? And why are you ill at ease about things in which you are ignorant? Because when Adam sinned and death was decreed against those who should be born, then the multitude of those who should be born was numbered. And for that number, a place was prepared where the living might dwell and the dead might be guarded. So he's saying the moment Adam sinned, he numbered the, the total number of people that would, that would come in history. And he went ahead and prepared a place. He numbered a place for where the living might dwell in that future and where the dead might be guarded. Before, therefore, the number aforesaid is fulfilled, the creature will not live again for my Ruach, for my Ruach is the creator of life, and Sheol will receive the dead. And again, it is given to you to hear what things are to come after these times. For truly my redemption has drawn nigh, and is not far distant as aforetime. So he's saying, there's not as much time, and this we heard this in Enoch, and we also heard this in Ezra, so I think, there's not as much time in the future as the time that has already passed, is what he's telling him. Right. So very interesting. And again, I think this is a important little note here is Ruach is a creator of life um, because it really does show us how when we, when we consider the Ruach of the Most High, the spirit of the Most High, it, it, is, it is his spirit. It is his hand. It is his voice. You know, it is his word. And even his, even his son is his word and is, is, is his right hand. So, um, it's just an interesting thing to consider that he says here, we see in uh, Hebrews that uh, the son, all things were made through him. And we see in first or John one, that uh, all things were also made through the son as well. And that, uh, that uh, nothing that was made was not made through him. And now we see here that the spirit is the creator of life as well. So we see kind of a interesting dynamic where it's all interconnected. Yeah. Well said. So, um, on 23, so it, it says right here that, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, oh yeah. So here we go. Then the multitude of those who should be born was numbered. So uh, what we find in scriptures, and again, to Ezra has a parallel verse to this that talks about how the times are numbered by the people. So check this out. When will and this isn't like new age? Like when was when is the new age coming? Like right the the age to come, right? It's two Ezra's four thirty three through forty three. Then I answered and said, "How long and when will these things be? Why are our years few and evil?" And he answered me and said, "You do not hasten faster than the Most High, for your haste is for yourself, but the highest hastens on behalf of many." Did not the souls of the righteous in their chambers ask about these matters, saying, "How long are we to remain here, and when will come the harvest of, of our reward?" And Jeremiah, the archangel, answered them and said, When the number of those like yourselves is completed, for he has weighed the age and the balance, and measured the times by measure, and numbered the times by number, and he will not move or arouse them until that measure is fulfilled. Right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, actually, we'll just keep going. And also, just a little side note. Um, I, I, you know, I never realized, I never understood who Jeremiah was. I've never seen any other mention of him in the scriptures. Uh, but I, apparently this is a different translation with the, with the J uh, in Enoch. We actually saw him in Enoch is this is Re Remiel, 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 I think is, is what his name mm -hmm. is. Um, so definitely want to look into this a little more because I don't know this verse and the, and Jeremiah, the archangel answered them. I, I don't know that verse, but I really want to find it. I know, um, uh, Sister Jamie talked about the Chronicles of Jeremiah, uh, but unfortunately this verse was not in it. So interesting. Just a little side note. Then I answered and said, O sovereign Adonai, but all of us are all full of ungodliness, and it, and it is perhaps on account of us that the time of threshing is delayed for the righteous on account of the sins of those who dwell on the earth. So again, Ezra is the same thing. It's like, you know, I, I want the end times to hasten. I want it here. I want it now. How do we do this? You know, right? 
he answered me and said, go ask, go and ask a woman who is with child. If when her nine months have been completed, her womb can keep the child within her any longer. And I said, no, Lord, it cannot. And he said to me in Hades, the chambers of the souls are like the womb. For just as a woman who is in travail makes haste to escape the pangs of birth, so also do these places hasten to give back those things which were committed to them from the beginning. Then the things that you desire to see will be disclosed to you. So, right? So it's the fullness of, of, of people. And, you know, Paul talked a little bit about it in Romans 11, uh, 1125, lest you be wise in your own conceits. I want you to understand this mystery, brethren. A hardening has come upon part of Israel until the full number of of the Gentiles come in, which is a reflection of, and uh, Justin knows this very well from the um, identity crisis video, which you guys have to see if you haven't seen it. But his father, this is uh, this is when Joseph brought Ephraim and Manassas to Jacob to bless him, right? And what happened was uh, Jacob actually put his hand on the wrong son. Um, he, he actually had him switched because Manasseh was the older son and um, Ephraim was the younger son, and he had his right hand on uh, on Ephraim, which was incorrect. It was supposed to be on the elder, and so uh, Jacob was, uh, I'm sorry, Joseph was like, no, 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 Father, let me move your hand. It's wrong. And it's, this is where it starts. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. Nevertheless, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations, right? And so I really believe that that's what is, this Paul was talking about till the full number of the Gentiles come in. The Gentiles is also synonymous with, with nations. Was it Malohai Goyim? Is that right, Justin? Yeah, Malohai Goyim. Yep, that's right. right. Multitude of nations, right? The fullness of the nations. So, yep. And Goyim, of course, Goy, Gentile, nations, right. all the same words. Right. So he's weighed the age in the balance of men. Okay. Anything else on 23? Uh, nope, not for me. Okay. All right. So let me screen share and we'll get to 24. Okay, Second Baruch 24. For behold, the days come, and the Seferim, this is books, shall be opened, in which are written the sins of all those who have sinned, and again also the treasuries in which righteousness of all those who have been righteous in creation is gathered. For it shall come to pass at that time that you shall see, and the many that are with you, the long suffering of El Elyon, which has been throughout all generations, who has been long suffering towards all who are born, alike those who sin and those who are righteous. And I answered and said, But behold, O Yahuwah, no one knows the number of those things which have been passed, nor yet of those things which are to come. For I know indeed that which has befallen us, but what will happen to our enemies I know not, and when you will visit your works. So really quick, I... Um, Let's see, do I want to read 25 before I jump into that? Let me see here. What do we got? Well, it says, it talks about here at times the days come when the books will be open, right? And so we see that in Daniel, um, Daniel 12, 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased, right? Mm -hmm. We know that we're in those days right now for sure. Mm -hmm. And then this is Daniel 7.10, a stream of fire issued and came forth from him. A thousand thousand served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. And the court sat in judgment and the books were open, right? And so we just saw that here that the Sephirim shall be opened. And a couple other things, uh, Revelation 20 verses 12 to 13. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and the books were opened. Also, another book was opened, which was which is the book of life and the dead were judged by what was written in the books by what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead in them and all were judged by what they have done. And it's just interesting that we just read in Baruch about how Hades uh, giving up what was actually, I'm sorry, we read that in Ezra's about how um, 
uh, that Hades or, or, or Sheol gives back that's dead when it's full. It's like a pregnant woman's belly right now, just getting fuller and fuller and fuller. And when it's time, it's going to give, it's going to give them back up, which actually we, we probably get one of the, one of the most intricate, uh, visions of that in this book. I think it's in the fifties. So it might not be next week, but the following week afterwards, we'll actually get a picture uh, of that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, last but not least, uh, lo and behold, a little passage from 2 Ezra, right? When I heard this, I this is chat, uh, 2 Ezra 6, verse 17 through 26. When I heard this, I rose to my feet and listened. Behold, a voice was speaking, and its sound was like the sound of many waters. We know who that is. And it said, Behold, the days are coming, and it shall be that when I draw near to visit the inhabitants of the earth, and when I require the do require from the doers of iniquity the penalty of their iniquity, and when the humiliation of Zion is complete— and when the seal is placed upon the age, which is about to pass away, then I will show these signs. The books shall be opened before the firmament, and all shall see it together. I wonder what that's going to look like, right? Mm -hmm. We Remember this? We read this a, uh, a couple months ago. Infants a year old shall speak with their voices, and women with child shall give birth to premature children at three or four months, which this is possible right now. It's in interesting. And these shall live and dance. Sown places shall suddenly appear unsown. And full storehouses shall suddenly be found to be empty, and the trumpet shall sound aloud, and when all hear it, they shall suddenly be terrified. We're actually going to learn a little bit more about trumpets tonight for those of you that want to join me after this live stream ends, and we're going to do our Torah portion immediately afterwards. We're going to be talking a little more about trumpets tonight. At that time, friends shall make war on friends like enemies, and the earth and those who inhabit it shall be terrified, and the springs of the fountains shall stand still, so that for three or hours they shall not flow. And this is really interesting here. This is you get a vision of the of the hundred forty four thousand uh, being glorified, and it shall be that that whoever remains after all that I have foretold you shall himself be saved and shall see my salvation and end of my world. This is the people that survive uh, the tribulation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, this people, and it says, and they shall see the men who were taken up, who from their birth have not tasted death, right? And mm -hmm. so this is the people that will never die. And Paul said it. Paul said, I know a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the twinkling, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, right? Um, and uh, we'll actually see, um, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on tonight as well. Um, actually, we're going to be, I've got a little reading from the Apocalypse of Abraham, Justin, and uh, it's actually going to talk about this right here, uh, people that were that were um, uh, spared. That, that there's a number, a certain number that was spared uh, from these times that uh, are to come. So pretty interesting stuff. Amen. All right. Very interesting. Okay, so we're at 25. And he answered and said to me. You too shall be preserved till that time, till the sign which El Elyon will work for the inhabitants of the earth in the end days. This, therefore, shall be the sign when a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth, and they shall fall into many tribulations, and again, when they shall fall into great torments. And it will come to pass when they say, when they say in their thoughts by reason of their much tribulation, El Elohim no longer remembers the earth, yea, it will come to pass when they abandon hope that 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 the time will then awake. And I think we are we are here. You know how many? I mean, what, I think the greater part of the population would agree with this statement right here, mm -hmm. right? When they yeah. abandon hope, and that well, you know that, that kind of coincides, is dead, right? Yeah, yeah, and that kind of coincides with uh, you know the teaching about mystery Babylon, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, in what way? Maybe I'm missing it. I mean, what what could cause everyone to say that there is no the God? Oh, 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 yeah, good call. There's Which, no God. Well, that's true. Remember, because all these verses that people are spouting off right now, like in Zechariah, you know that, um, you know that you know they, they shouldn't, you know, they shall not lose in war, and they shall they won't be harmed, and uh, because everybody thinks that this is the fulfillment of the regathering, right? It says that Jerusalem will never be never be destroyed, which. Uh, I'm working on a video right now about Mystery Babylon. It should be out next week. I wanted it out this week, but it's going to be out next week. Um, but unequivocally, I will show you by scriptures alone, not any wisdom of men, that Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. There's tons of daughters of Babylon, and we live in a daughter of Babylon, right? 
this is a daughter of Babylon, you know, and, and so we're coming out of Babylon, but there's only one great harlot and who was, who was the most high married to, right? That's right. That's right. The, the woman that went a whoring, the great harlot, and many have partaken of her ways now and have mingled with, with the world. And that's what, that's what, uh, that's what they were charged with, right? That's what, um, was in, and, and I'll go over this in the video, but in Ezekiel 23, he talks about the two, the two sisters, uh, Ahola and Aholiba, right? Right. Ahola was Samaria. Aholiba was Jerusalem. And it talked about how Ahola, 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 right? She went a whoring after the Assyrians. And guess what? He sent the Assyrians to go take her down. And then it talked about Aholiba went a whoring after the Babylonians. And guess what? The Babylonians came in and, and destroyed her. Um, but it also talks about what's interesting because we know that, um, mystery Babylon has a cup filled to the double, right? And right. it's interesting in that, in that passage in Ezekiel 23 talks about how a holy Jerusalem is also, not only does she have her own cup, cup to drink of wrath, but he's also given his sister's cup and that's why you have a double cup. So interesting stuff, but yeah, you're right. So come back to your point. Thank you is you're right when we do see this because i do see, believe we'll see in our generation when we see that entire area leveled what are people going to say people are going to start casting doubt on the scriptures excellent point bro thanks for bringing that up praise you praise you and that will happen okay uh let's see where was i and it's another thing, right? It says you two shall be preserved till that time. So like we, like we spoke with uh, brother Alexander last week, you know, there's, there's language in both this book and in, in, in two Esdras, how they both basically were taken up uh, and they didn't die, at least in the, from what we can read from this book. So really, right. so, you know, whether that means the two witnesses or not, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I still tend to think that, you know, uh, that's the two houses, right? The two olive trees, says the two olive trees standing before the the god of the earth and uh you know that is the the stick of of judah and the stick of uh, ephraim the two houses but still open to being wrong my brother yeah right, i'll read this long one 26 you ready absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and i answered and said will that tribulation which is to be is to be continue a long time and will that necessity embrace many years? So he's like, you know, this tribulation, is it going to be, it's going to be long? All right. Here's where it gets pretty interesting. Very interesting. And he answered and said to me into 12 parts is that time divide. I want you to remember that, that 12 parts, because we're going to read the apocalypse of Abraham here in a little bit. And it also says the exact same thing in 12 parts is that time divided. And each one of them is reserved for that, which it is appointed for in the first part shall be the beginning of commotions. And we know Yeshua talked about the beginning of commotions in Matthew 24 when he talked about the end times, right? We said uh, nation shall be against nation, people against people, uh, earthquakes and famines in diverse places, and this shall be the beginning of commotions. And the second part, there shall be the slayings of the great ones. And, you know, this has kind of always puzzled me, you know, who the great ones are. Um, are, are these... The great ones of the earth are these physically great ones um you know are, are these spiritual great ones are, are these believers are these uh, non-believers uh, you know what do you yeah. any idea well you know it kind of makes me think about revelation 12 even where you know there was a there's a war in the heavens right oh yeah right the, when, when does that occur right after the dragon pursues the woman that, that, right right um so yeah, I mean, it could potentially be actual, you know, great ones up in the in the heavenly realm as well. I don't know. That's yeah, good point. And in the third part, the fall of many by death. And in the fourth part, the sending of the sword. And this is interesting too, because I really believe that we are the sword in the last days. The Joel II army, the 144,000, um, you know, and, 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 you know, we brought this up quite a few times in the last couple of weeks that, you know, it says after that, that seventh uh, week, you know, which is the apostate week, the week of, of the, the, uh, the Roman church and the dark ages, the medieval times, if you will, um, you know, it talks about after that in the eighth week, a righteous generation shall arise, right? And it says that a great sword will be given to them and they will basically execute judgment. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. It reminds me of, uh, of course, when uh, Yahusha comes, it says that there's uh, a sword proceeding from his mouth. Uh, mm -hmm. where, where's that vision of Yahusha in, in the book of Revelation? Yeah, Re uh, chapter one. Yeah, where he has the lampstand and the stars and then a sword proceeding from his mouth, right? Right. So, oh no, he's actually, he's riding on a white horse and he has a sword coming out of his mouth. Oh, okay, so it, two times it says yeah. that. And, okay, yeah. The first time I was describing them, you're right. And the second time, you're right. Well, what's also interesting, and the, kind of like how you mentioned earlier that, you know, Joshua, the book of Joshua is a foreshadow of Yahusha in the last times. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, once they crossed the Jordan, what did they do? They destroyed everything. Right. Everything. Right. Exactly. And if, if, if what's happened is to, to be again, you know, Ecclesiastes 1 9, there's nothing new in the sun. Uh, and then Ecclesiastes 3 15, Yahuwah requires that which is past. So basically, history repeats itself. Right. Well, if that's the case, and if that is the, the mold, well, yeah, again, hello. Amen. The sword, the sword is coming. And guess what? A lot of us don't realize that we're actually the sword. And in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rain. And you know, it's something that's I've been dwelling on lately, and and you know we know there is definitely famine and hunger all throughout this world. I mean, we've got homeless in this own in this country, right? The richest country in the world. But you know, there's also famine or or, or, or um, people starving, in, in, you know, in, in other countries. But I also believe that you know it's twofold. We've been talking about it, is that that verse, and I think it's in Amos, right? It says, "Behold, the days are coming that there shall be a famine, but not for bread, but right. for the word of Yahuwah." And right. I think this famine has been going on since what, 200 AD, 150 AD, yeah, you know, a long time, long time, long time. Yeah. a long time. And he's just now starting to wake us up and to, you know, to, to feed us and, you know, not just the milk that, that people have been dwelling on for the last, you know, 1800 years, but the full word the full truth and praise you for that. Right. Definitely. <laughs> and in the sixth part, earthquakes and terrors. This is really interesting. Uh, the seventh part is in all in all the uh, in all uh, translations is empty. It's it says wanting right here, but really it's just blank. And in the eighth part, a multitude of specters and the attacks of the shadim, and then this is the demons, right? Mm -hmm. the, the unclean spirits. And in the ninth part, the fall of fire. And in the tenth part, rip rapine, or is it rape raping rape and much rapine. oppression? I'm not sure what rapine is. I looked that up. Okay. And, you know, I, I, we can honestly say that, you know, the, 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 oh, okay. It's plunder. Plunder. Okay. Plunder and oppression. To steal I, people's stuff, basically. Okay. Or seizure of another person's property. Well, that's been going on for a long time in this country. Yeah. <laughs> and in the 11th part, wickedness and unchastity. And in the 12th part, confusion from the mingling together of all those things aforesaid. So right in the last part, everything, all this is going to be like mixed together, right? Mm -hmm. And shall be mingled one with another and minister one to another. For some shall leave out some of their own and receive it in its stead from others. And some complete their own and that of others so that these may not understand who are upon the earth in those days that this is the consummation of the times. Um and so I just want to read a couple things about that. Uh, I think, does it over here? Do I have it? Yeah, well, it says right here, you know, the last part it says, uh, so that those who may not understand who are upon the earth in those days, that is the consummation of the times. Because, I mean, they're just, they're ignorant to what's going on. I mean, just period. Right. And, you know, it says in Daniel 12, 3, that they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Um and right here, many shall be purified, made white, and tried. You were talking a lot about this earlier, right? To mm -hmm. try them. Uh, many shall be tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, right? And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So praise. Let's take a moment and just hallelujah that we're here. We're spending our time on a Friday night discussing the word instead of doing whatever we used to be doing, whatever we used to be consumed with, uh, consumerism, materialism, nastiness filthiness whatever we were doing before praise yah that he called us out of that and called us into his marvelous light can we get a hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> it's i mean that <laughs> oh man i mean it, it's it's one of those things that just doesn't make any sense outside of outside of his spirit being poured out in such a way that that is doing something huge and miraculous in this time not just to wake us up and pull us away from the world and 
and cause us to start to exit the system and exit Babylon, but also to start feeding us, to start giving us an understanding of things that we have not understood. I mean, uh, it's crazy. We, we have so many brothers and sisters out there who just from their own, you know, I, I was raised reading the Bible all the time. And somehow it wasn't until just two and a half years ago suddenly I wanted to, out of thin air, and suddenly it was saying something a lot different than I was taught my whole life, right? Like, he did this. He must have done this. And now the, the witness, the testimony, uh, the witness is the testimony of so many other people who he's also done this to and is doing it to, many, many of whom are in the chat right now. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. It's all him. It's for his namesake. It, that's, that's proof that that's proof that it's not of us. We were all living in wickedness and sin and, and in the matrix and blind. And wh why would all of a sudden all of us wake up and come to this, right. this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, this way? It gives him all the credit. Praise him. Praise Yah. And the fact where we came from gives him even more glory that we weren't all just, you know, sitting around as righteous people, right? That mm -hmm. That is such a testimony, a witness to him and his power that he can pull us wicked people out of our old wicked ways, cleanse us. And yeah. and change our hearts from within. That this is what we desire. Like, go figure. I never imagined that this is what all I'd want to do is to yeah. read his word and talk about it. Like, this is this is like the coolest thing. I say coolest. That's not even the right word. It's the most awesome thing I've ever done. You know, is is to be able to to speak his word, right? And just so thankful to be able to do this. And thank you guys for being here uh, and even listening to this. Um, just awesome, awesome, well, that, awesome. All that ties into. What you were just saying um, again here that, and this is a really important point here, that because of the mingling of so the mingling together of each of those things, these different parts, um, that those on the earth will not understand that this is the consummation of the time. So if, if one of these things happened in order and then in order and then in order, and it was just, just nothing but, you know, just nothing but worldwide calamity and death, followed by nothing but uh, famine and withholding of rain. Like people would start to realize that something's terribly wrong with this this earth, right? But because of the way it's it's uh, it's coming, all mixed together and here and there, you're only gonna know what's going on if you're wide awake. And That's true. That's actually a really good point. You're right because it's all mixed together, right? It's yeah. just wow. That's a good call. But um. Yeah, just praise him. You know, Yeshua himself said, he says, no one can come to me unless the Father first draw him, right? And, and that, that's a bold statement if you think about it. No one, no one can come to him unless the Father first draw him. Amen. Amen. So again, hallelujah that he, that he drew us. So I want to read a little bit about, uh, I want to read a little bit through um, Apocalypse of Abraham. And pretty interesting. And, and, and actually just real quick, I want to uh, share just some of the notes. It's a it's a little different for each one, but the plagues. Hang on. So, with Baruch, we saw the beginning of commotions, the slaying of the great ones, the fall of many by death, the sending of the sword. Oops, famine and withholding of rain, earthquakes and terrors. Seven is empty. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Is this like silence? You know. Uh, there was like oh, yeah. a silence for the space of about a half an hour in, in Revelation. I thought that was pretty interesting. It could have yeah. connection. Not sure. Uh, the multitude of specters and attacks of the Shadim, the fall of fire, uh, was this plunder and much oppression, wickedness and unchastity, confusion from the mingling together of all those of things aforesaid. So what we're going to see here in Abraham real quick, uh, sorrow for much, for much need, fiery conf conflagrations. Uh, this is, uh, you know, just the fall of fire like we just saw. Um, wow. here in Baruch, um, destruction of pestilence among cattle, very similar to what we saw in Exodus and in Revelation, famine of the world, earthquake and sword, hail and snow, wild beasts kill people, pestilence and hunger, execution by sword and flight and distress, thunder, voices, and destroying earthquakes. And, uh, and then again, in Exodus, you've got the blood, the frogs, the lice, the gnats, flies, the livestock dying, the boils, the hail, locust, darkness, and the death of the firstborn. So definitely um, a common theme throughout all these. I thought that was pretty interesting. 
Um, but let's let's read a little bit of the Apocalypse of Abraham, which one day I think we definitely should go through this whole book, which is amazing. All right. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little more. This is I know this text is pretty small. Whoa. I'll give you guys a headache real quick. Hang on. Don't look at the screen right now. Don't look at it. Okay, so we're going to be reading here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is a whole different translation. So this side here, so starting at chapter 29. And I said, Eternal Mighty One, how long a time is an hour of the age? And he said, I decreed to keep 12 periods of the impious age among the heathens and among your seed, and what you have seen will be until the end of the time. So again, just real quickly, we're seeing divided into 12, 12 parts. Count it up, and you will understand. Look down at the picture. And I looked and saw a man going out from the left, the heathen side. From the side of the heathen went out went out men and women and children, a great crowd, and they worshipped him. And while I, I well, I'm sorry, while I was still looking, those on the right side came out, and some insulted this man, and some struck him, and others worshipped him. And I saw that as they worshipped him, Azazel ran and worshipped and worship and kissing his face so just to give you some context this is yahushua and it says some worshiped him uh, and others insulted him right and then we see here this is interesting remember it said and satan entered judas and mm -hmm. i saw that they worshiped him and azazel ran and worshiped and kissing his face remember he said he said um judas you know um betray us the son of man with a kiss remember when he kissed him remember when right. he told the, the soldiers he said he him who i kiss the same as he and uh, I think this is interesting that this was prophesied a long time ago wow. that in the time of Abraham that um, Oz is there, that Satan would enter um, and kiss and kiss the Son of Man. Interesting. Wow. He turned and stood behind him, and I said, Eternal Mighty One, who is this man insulted and beaten by the heathen with Azazel worshipped? And he answered and said, Here, Abraham, the man whom you say insulted and beaten and again worshipped is the liberation from the heathen for the people – who will be born from you in the last days in this 12th period of the age of my fulfillment, I will set up this man from your tribe. The one whom you have seen for my people, all will imitate him. Consider him as one called by me. They are changed in their counsels and those you saw coming out from the left side of the picture and worshiping him. This means that many of the heathen will trust him. And those of your seed you saw on the right side, some insulting him and some beating him and others worshiping him. Many of them shall be offended because of him. Right? Remember the, the stone, the, the, stone, the stone of stumbling, right? Right. The rock of offense. Yep. It is he who will test those of your seed who have worshiped him in the fulfillment of the 12th hour in the curtailing of the age of impiety. This is the end of the age we're at right now before the age of justice starts to grow my judgment will come upon the heathen who have acted wickedly through the people of your seed who have been set apart for me in those days let's see oh yeah in those days i will bring upon all earthly creation 10 plagues through evil and disease and the groaning of the bitterness of their souls such will i bring upon the generations of those who are in it who are on it out of anger and corruption of their creations which they provoke me and then from your seed will be left the now listen to this. This is 144,000 here. Listen to this. And then from your seed will be left the righteous men in their number, protected by me, who strive in the glory of my name toward the place prepared beforehand. For them which you saw deserted in the picture, and they will live, being affirmed by the sacrifices and the gifts of justice and truth in the age of justice. And they will rejoice forever in me. And they will destroy those who have destroyed them. See, and again, this is the sword, right? The, they become the sword. Yep. This set apart in number, right? These men that are set apart in number, right? And they will rejoice forever in me, and they will destroy those who have destroyed them. They will rebuke those who have rebuked them through their mockery, and they will spit in their faces. I don't know. Are we going to do that? I don't know. Those rebuked by me when they are to see me rejoicing with my people for those who rejoice and receive and truly return to me. Right? Amen. We were just talking about that, how we return to them. We're all, we all, almost all of us have the prodigal, prodigal son story. Amen. See, Abraham, what you have seen and hear what you have heard and know what you have known. Go to your inheritance and behold, I am with you forever. Now, here in chapter 30 talks about the plagues. I just want to go through it real quick. 
And while he was still speaking, I found myself on the earth and said, Eternal mighty one, I am no longer in the glory which I was above, and that my soul desired to understand in my heart I do not understand. And he said to me, I will explain to you the thing you desired in your heart, for you have sought to know the ten plagues which I prepared against the heathen, and I prepared them beforehand in the passing of the twelve hours on earth. Hear what I tell you, it will be thus. Excuse me, first, sorrow from much need. Second, the fiery conflag conflagrations for the cities. The third, destruction by pestilence among the cattle. The fourth, famine of the world. Could be almost be famine of the word, right? Of their generation. The fifth, among the rulers, destruction by earthquake and the sword. The sixth, increase of hail and snow. The seventh, wild beasts will be their grave. The eighth, pestilence and hunger will change their destruction. The ninth, execution by the sword and flight and distress. Tenth, Thunder, voices, and destroying earthquakes. And I think this is really interesting that wow. this is the sixth seal. It talked when the sixth seal is open that there are thunders and voices and destroying earthquakes. And it's really interesting that it also mimics what it was like when the Most High, or I'm sorry, when Yesh Yahusha was on Mount Sinai. There was thick clouds and smoke and thunders and voices and lightnings, right? Mm -hmm. Really, really interesting stuff. But um, the Apocalypse of Abraham is a fascinating, fascinating read. And I, I think we'll definitely go through this uh, in the future. But I uh, really saw a lot of parallels there that I wanted to share with everyone. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize how, man, it's like they're like super parallel. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is. All right. Um, there is, well, there were almost, it was seven, it was it seven, seven, seven for a second? in here oh, really? <laughs> only 231 likes and only four dislikes take just a moment if you will and whichever one whichever one's you whichever one suits you all right so enough of that rabbit trail anything uh let's see uh no i think that we pretty much wrapped up 27 okay give me just a second I, uh, I accidentally x out of an extra tab that I had up ready for this. Okay. All right, chapter 28. Oops, I need screen share. How are we doing on time? Okay, all right, we're doing good. We're almost done. We'll do a few questions, and then we'll shut her down, and we'll do tour portions. Okay. Chapter 28, nevertheless, whoever understands shall then be wise, right? We just read that in Daniel 3, right? They that, uh, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And then many shall be purified, made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and though none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand, right? And it's right mm -hmm. here. Nevertheless, whoever understands then shall be wise. For the measure and reckoning of that time are two parts, a week of seven weeks. So hold on. Let's slow that down. Okay. So for the measure and reckoning of that time are two parts, a week of seven weeks. So the way I read this is – uh, there's two parts. Pause. Or separate that two parts away from a week of seven weeks. So if you have a week of seven weeks, that's 49 weeks, right? But then it says there's two parts. Two parts, a week of seven weeks. So I read it like 98 weeks. But maybe I'm wrong. I can see that. I... I I believe it's saying a week of seven weeks to to let you know that we're talking about a week of years, right? Right. So, and, and maybe I'm just trying to fit our current understanding that there's a seven year tribulation and there's a three and a half year and a three and a half year part. So, right. I guess how I'm kind of molding it is two parts of a week, right? So, we know the three and a half year reign of the Antichrist uh, and then the other three and a half years. And but you're right because then there's a week of seven weeks. Is it saying that? Uh, that because if, if it was if it was seven weeks of years, it would just say seven weeks of years. But it says a week of seven weeks, so I think it's trying to tell us that it's a week 
of years. I don't yeah, know. It's like a week of seven weeks would be, you know, like a jubilee, or the it would be would be yeah, it'd be a jubilee year. But there'd be two of those. So, but yeah, it's very it's very difficult. I I did some math on my calculator earlier. And it doesn't add up to any number that I recognize at all when you do like the number of days and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a tough one. It is a tough one. And, uh, you know, that, that, uh, brothers and sisters, this is a, uh, you know, we do all this together. So, you know, if this is something that maybe Yah has, has revealed to you, you know, go ahead and put it in chat. We can, we can, we can test that. Or, um, you know, if you're watching this as a recording, you can put it as a comment. I'd love to, you know, love to talk about this if, if this is something that maybe uh, Yah has given you wisdom on that he hasn't given us wisdom on. And I answered and said, It is good for a man to come and behold, but it is better that he should not come lest he fall. But I will say this also, and, and again, of course, Ezra says something very similar. He's like, It, it would have been better if you know we would not have been born rather than to, to live and to sin and to, to not and to die. But I will say this also, will he who is incorruptible despise those things which are corruptible? And whatsoever befalls in the case of those things which are corruptible, so that he might look only to those things which are not corruptible? But if, O Yahuwah, those things shall assuredly come to pass which you have foretold to me, so do you show this also unto me, if indeed I have found grace in your sight. Is it in one place or in one part of the earth that those things are to come to pass? Or will the whole earth experience them? And let's see. And he answered and said unto me, Whatsoever will then befall, will befall the whole world. Therefore all who live will experience them. For at that time I will, listen to this, this is interesting words right here. For at that time I will protect only those who are found in those selfsame days in this land. So, it really just confirms for me that, you know, when these judgments come, when these bowls come, when these vials are poured, we're going to be in the protection of New Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's really clear here. For at that time, I will protect only those who are found in those selfsame days in this land. So I want to go on a little rabbit trail real quick uh, before we just finish up 29 and 30. So again, talking about uh, protecting us. So this is Psalm 27. I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Adonai is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me, uttering slanders, I'm sorry, uttering slanders against me, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of Yahuwah that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yahuwah all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Yahuwah and to inquire in his temple. And I think this is, man, this is what we all seek, right? This is what we all want. So listen to this. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent and he will set me high upon a rock. And we know that many times that New Jerusalem is likened to a great mountain or a, a lofty rock, right? right? So I think this is really all of it right here, that in this day of trouble, right, in the day, the day of Jacob's trouble, the time of tribulation, he will hide me in his shelter. And I think this is what we read right here. For at that time, I will protect only those who are found in the selfsame days in this land. And again, that goes back to what we were saying earlier, Justin. Thank you for bringing up um, Mystery Babylon. Because New Jerusalem is going to come down, that land has to be cleansed of all right. the filth that's on it. And you know what's interesting? This is something that uh, literally just in the last few days, um, as I've been studying just all the, the, the 12 prophets and the major prophets, I don't know what what came uh, what came across me to do this, but well, obviously you know, the Most High put it in my heart. But you know, I was reading Joel and Zechariah and Zephaniah and Micah and 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 um, you know just all the prophets, right? And it, it, in every one of those books, it talks about the day of Yahuwah, right? The the day that the, the destruction happens, you know, and the cities that are listed, you know, Jerusalem, Ashkelon, Ekron, Lebanon. Um, Egypt, Assyria, um, 
you know, all these, the, well, what's interesting is I, I was like, okay, he's starting to, he's repeating these same cities over and over again. So I, 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 um, uh, just, um, uh, I printed out, I uh, printed out a, uh, um, I screenshotted the map, Google maps. Right. And I, and I saved it and put it in, put it into Photoshop and I started, um, like just putting circles around the areas that he was mentioning. Well, what's interesting is you look at all these cities that are going to be destroyed in the day of the Lord. It's the original borders of Israel, the, the bigger borders that should have been if they would have destroyed everybody. Right. 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 So what's going to, what I believe is going to happen, you know, is all that whole area, the Levant, I think, I think is what it's called in our time, but that whole area is going to be destroyed at one time. And you're right. People are going to be like, I thought Jerusalem would never be destroyed. Like what's, right. what's going on? I thought he was, he was going to protect it. You know, Israel, I mean, the Jews are there and they're, you know, they're his people. And, and, you know, this is the regathering and a, a nation was born in one day in 1948. You know, what's going to happen? <laughs> right. 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 So anyways, um, just, I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, but I believe that that destruction is going to start everything, start the tribulate. That's just, that's just my opinion. I'm still trying to figure this out, how this all goes down, but I believe that day of destruction of that land is going to start this. You know, New Jerusalem comes down, we're gathered unto it, and then, you know, the, the reign of, of uh, um, anti-Messiah starts, and he uh, he brings the, the nations against, uh, to fight against uh, Yahusha, and we are that, again, we've been, you know, I've been talking about it, bro. Um, you know, we're that outside alien threat, right? That, right. That, the whole world is preparing us for with um, mixed media. I mean, and everything, TV shows, movies, music. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. You know, uh, it's always showing this outside superior force that comes that, you know, uh, that, that, that human weapons are, 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 you know, they're, or the, the, the aliens defenses are, are impenetrable. Well, I think that, the most high is going to have an impenetrable force around us, right? That these people are going to be like, Oh, this is everything we've been seeing. You know, we, we got to band together. We got to put our differences aside and we got to, you know, and that's, that's, that's what he, that's what has Satan is breeding in this, in this world right now. But anyways, to go back to the point, uh, again, I do believe that he is going to be hiding uh, his, his wise, the wise virgins, the ones that are ready. Right. And um, what's interesting is we're going to talk a little bit more about this, uh, tonight in the tour portion for those that, that join me afterwards, but going back to this for, he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. This is the day of, uh, of Jacob's trouble, right? He'll conceal me under the covering of his tent, right? New Jerusalem. He will set me high upon a rock, new Jerusalem. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies round about me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy, right? What else are we going to do when we get gathered there? I will sing and make melody to the Lord, right? Sing unto him a new song. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Adonai, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Thou hast said, Seek ye my face. My heart says to thee, Thy face, Adonai, do I seek. And, you know, just again, talking about the wise and the foolish, what separates, uh, and, and talking about there, there is a protection. You know, we know that the the what we've been taught by the church the pre-tribulational rapture is a lie that you know every every confessing christian whether they you know keep commandments or not whether they keep shabbat or not are all going to be gathered well, listen to this woe to those who sin and do not observe my commandments says yahuwah i will not spare them depart you faithless children do not pollute my sanctuary for yahuwah knows all who transgress against him therefore he will hand them over to death and slaughter for now calamities have come upon the whole earth and we just saw that in baruch it's answered that the whole world will will, will uh, experience these for now calamities have come upon the whole earth and you shall remain in them for yahuwah will not deliver you because you have sinned against him right what does that tell again i know we've said this many times but what does that tell you for people that have faith and do keep his commandments right Right, right. So a little rabbit trail, but again, for at that time, I will protect only those who are found in, the, in those selfsame days in this land. And it shall come to pass when all is accomplished that was to come to pass in those parts that Hamashiach shall then begin to be revealed. And Behemoth shall be revealed from his place and Leviathan shall ascend from the sea. Those two great monsters, which I created on the fifth day of creation and shall have kept until that time and then shall they be for food for all that are left. So uh, once again, at this time, for the time that we are protected, right? When I believe that New Jerusalem will be present, right? And it'll be that, 
you know, we see in all these alien movies, these aliens have these huge walls, right? Or these huge structures. Well, what's a 1500 mile wide by 1500 mile long by 1500 mile tall structure going to be like, right? Yeah, sticking out into into fake space, right? <laughs> exactly. Like a and, ball with a big cube <laughs> attached to the side. <laughs> and, then, and then you've got these two huge monsters. Well, again, why do you have like movies like Jurassic Park and movies like Godzilla preparing people to see these huge animals coming out, probably devouring people? Mm -hmm. And that's part of his judgment. Right, right. The earth also shall yield its fruit 10,000 fold and on each vine, there shall be a thousand branches and each branch shall produce a thousand clusters and each cluster pr produce a thousand grapes and each grape produce a core of wine. Remember we saw in first Adam and Eve, remember that those figs, it said that that, that fig was like the size of uh, goodness. What did it say? Like a watermelon or something. I can't remember, but it was like 10 times the size yeah. uh, normal because it was from the garden. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then also we saw the when the spies went into um, Canaan, they brought back those grapes that were the size of their heads. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Interesting stuff. Okay. And those who have hungered shall rejoice, moreover. Also, they shall, and I think this is hungered for the word. They shall behold marvels every day, for wind shall go forth from before me to bring every morning the fragrance of aromatic fruits, and and at the close of the day clouds distilling the dew of health. And it shall come to pass at that self same time that the treasury of manna shall again descend from on high, and they will eat of it in those years, because they are because these are they who have come to the consummation of time. So is I mean I don't know. Is that is that is this manna itself, or is this like a uh, you know, is this like a, an analogy for the whole word being revealed that we're eating of the whole world, the whole word, uh, you yeah. know, or are we actually eating manna? Which I'll be cool with, and you know, it's something. Uh, once again, this is another topic we're going to talk about uh, that I'm going to talk about in the Torah portion coming up. You know, about the the manna because when the portion we're going to go over talks about the grumblings they had, right? They're like, we want meat to in Egypt. We had leeks and onions and blah, blah, blah. you know. So what if what if we're gathered and it's a whole another wilderness experience? Right. Are we going to have the, the the fortitude to be like, I don't care about how awesome you know we can just go to you know, go to these grocery stores or whatever and just get whatever we want, whenever we want, you know, can we forego that and, you know, just eat the same thing every day? Like, you know, like the, the Israelites of old, would, would we be able to do that? You know, well, that's, that's a really interesting question. And I think that that perhaps that's another, another good uh, aspect of fasting um, and, you know, having a little bit of self-control and discipline in this, in this life um, comes in handy but um, also, I wanted to say that that uh, that verse in verse seven it says that the fragrance every morning the fragrance of aromatic fruits at the close of the day clouds distilling the dew of health um, in the garden in the first book of Adam and Eve in the garden they didn't rain it had a dew that came up from the ground uh, to uh, to to water the garden right and. And so the day clouds distilling the dew of health. And it said when he removed them from the garden, according to the first book of Adam and Eve, he said he didn't want to put them on the south side of the garden because for fear that the wind might blow and they would they would smell the fragrance of the aromatic fruits from the garden, and that would be like torture for them, basically. Right. So now we're seeing this again, this another another confirmation that returning to the garden is interconnected with Zion interconnected with New Jerusalem. Yeah. Wow. Good call. Yeah. Good call. I, f I forgot about that part. I remember, I remember they, I remember him not wanting them to go out on the North side because of the water, right? That they, right. Would, be, they would be cleansed, be right. The, the, was it was, yeah, it was the South side. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh. So uh, again, you know, I do, uh, well, I don't believe in the pre-tribulational rapture that we've been taught. I do believe that there is a snatching away and a protection uh, for those that have faith and keep his commandments, period, period. Um, because Hasatan has done his job again, unfortunately, just like in the beginning when um, 
you know, he convinced Adam and Eve that, that the commandments didn't need to be observed. Well, he's also done it in this time with the wisdom of men, right? Just like 2,000 years ago when Yeshua came and rebuked the Pharisees. He's like, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You know, you you um, uh, you make none affect the commandments of God through your traditions. And what's going on right now? What's the difference of the Pharisees of old and the Pharisees of now that they, you know, they make of no effect the commandments of Yahuwah. Yep. And whether, whether that be through adding their own or by saying that uh, his son did away with them, even though he very clearly tells us that he did not. Right. Either way, you make them of none effect. So whether you call yourself a Christian or something else, you know, either way, if you're making the commandments of none effect, then you're, you're guilty of that. Yeah, exactly. So, but I know you all are here for a reason. But we continually get new uh, new brothers and sisters joining us each week that have no idea what we're talking about. So, all right, we got one last chapter, and then we'll uh, maybe just do a few questions, and we'll wrap her up for tonight. And again, for those of you that may have just joined us uh, immediately after this live stream ends, you can join me on the for the Torah portion. Which, if you go back to the homepage, uh, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. All right, last chapter, chapter thirty. And it shall come to pass after these things, when the time of the advent of Hamashiach is fulfilled, that he shall return in glory. This reminds me of that passage that we that we frequent so much in the ascension of Isaiah. Remember, on the eve of his advent and the return of his approach. Yeah, I'm gonna read that in just a second, just because. Uh, we, well, we had spent a long time since we read Ascension, and, and we've got a lot of new brothers and sisters with us. I really want them to see that. Then all who have fallen asleep in hope of him shall rise again, and it shall come to pass at that time that the treasuries will be open in which is preserved the number of the souls of the righteous. Right Here's again that, that number. The age of everything is weighed with the number of the souls. And they shall come forth, and a multitude of souls shall be seen together in one assemblage of one thought, and the first shall rejoice, and the last shall not be grieved. For they shall know that the time has come, which it is said, that it is the consummation of the times. But the souls of the wicked, when they behold all these things, shall then waste away the more. For they shall know that their torment has come, and their perdition has arrived. And actually what's really interesting about that is that reminds me of Daniel. It says right here, and many, it's talking about the great tribulation, right? And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Now listen, it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So this resurrection is not going to just be of the righteous, right? There's going to be some that are that have everlasting shame and contempt. So pretty interesting stuff. But uh, I want to just talk about real quickly, um, it talks about, when the time of the advent advent of Hamashiach is fulfilled, right? Uh, this is some, some language in there that reminds me of the ascension of Isaiah. We're going to read. It's really, really close to home with what's going on right now. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Here, we'll start at 19. This is ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, starting at verse 19. And many that believe in him will speak through the Holy Spirit, and many signs and wonders will be wrought in those days. And afterwards, on the eve of his approach, his disciples will forsake the teaching of the twelve apostles and their faith and their love and their purity. And there will be much contention on the eve of his advent and his approach. And in those days, many, and this is where we're at right now, by the way, if you haven't figured out, we are at the on the eve of his advent and his approach, right? He's at the door. And in those days, many will love office, though devoid of wisdom. We're talking about not wisdom of men. We're talking about devoid of true wisdom from the Father. And mm -hmm. there will be many lawless elders and shepherds dealing wrongly by their own sheep. And they will ravage them owing to their not having holy shepherds. And many will change the honor of the garment of the saints for the garments of the covetous. And there will be much respect of persons in those days and lovers of the honor of this world. And there will be much slander and vainglory at the approach of Adonai, and the Holy Spirit will withdraw from many. That is, that is a hot iron poker right there. Preach it. Testify. 
We're know, seeing uh, it. We know a few brothers that we, I think we've actually witnessed this. Oh not yeah. Like a, not like a physical we saw happen, but we saw them change from a spirit filled person to not a spirit filled person. We've seen a few, haven't we? Yeah. And then, you know, just, oh, man, the slander, you know, in 26, seen a lot of that too. Yeah, we have. And there will not be in those days many prophets, nor those who speak trustworthy words, save one here and there in diverse places. On account of the spirit of error and fornication and of vainglory and of covetousness, which shall be in those who will be called servants of that one and in those who will receive that one. And there will be great hatred in the shepherds and elders towards each other. Boy, oh boy. Wow. How I mean, remember, remember last time we read this, all that yeah. stuff that just went down hadn't gone down, and this just makes it all the much more clear. Yeah, we see it nonstop on on YouTube, right? Nonstop. We, there's channels who once were literally um, pretty, I don't know, at least pretty kind. They showed some of the fruit of the spirit, it seemed like, and they had a certain calling on YouTube, whatever that was, and now it's like all they care to do is try and expose everyone and accuse people and condemn each other, people. And it's just, they've made it their entire ministry. It went from something completely different to what it is now where all they do is con condemn. And right. there's, there's just channels dedicated to that. It's, it's pretty crazy. And it's become commonplace now for this teacher or that teacher or this pastor or that pastor to, to just like it says to, you know, put themselves up and put everyone else down. And that's their, that's their tactic. Yep. Where, where and, then, and then I think the next verse actually explains it for there will be great jealousy in the last days for everyone will say what is pleasing in his own eyes. Yep. If, well, I don't know why, why anybody would be jealous, right? Like, I mean, we're all just, we're all running the same race, right? We're all, you know, striving for the same goal. Like what's there to be jealous about? I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's dispensationalism, and they will make of none effect the prophecy of the prophets which were before me. And these, my visions also, they will make of none effect in order to speak after the impulse of their own hearts. Wow. What a shame. Yep. But, yeah, we uh, we have witnessed this firsthand. Very much so. Very many times. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, not just, not just personally, but also – with our close brothers and sisters who are also in the ministry of one kind or another. And with, with, even with you guys, I'm, I'm sure many of you have seen it yourself. I know you have, I know you have, we have countless brothers and sisters who have testified to this. That they've, they've endured this slander and gossip and reviling and covetousness and all this. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I agree. So the, um, the, uh, study slash teaching is uh at an end um welcome brother jonathan from the code searcher.com welcome bro uh so now we're gonna i, I just try to say this because i know there's there's people that watch this as a as a um as a recording that aren't really interested in what we talk which actually i think some of the stuff we talk about with questions is pretty pretty meaty stuff too so stick around if you'd like uh we're gonna hang out with the chat for a little bit maybe I don't know, maybe what you got you got another 15, 20 minutes in you, bro? Yeah, for sure. And then again, after this ends, we're gonna go, we're gonna uh or I'm gonna do the um the tour portion, which I'll show you really quickly uh where to go. Those of you that are familiar with YouTube, you probably already know what to do, but just to give you just to show you real quick. So here's where you are now, here's where we're gonna be. So as soon as we end, all you gotta do is click on this right here, and it'll open up another chat room. And I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over to here, and we will start the week 36 tour portion with you. And again, what's not, it's interesting, and, and actually, like again, we're not uh, I'm not uh, surprised, but uh, some of the stuff we were talking about is actually in this tour portion this week. So really cool, really cool stuff. Um, and then also while I'm here on screen share. Uh, I want to just share with you a couple things. Number one, uh, this is Brother Justin's channel, Christian Truthers. We are partners together. Go ahead and subscribe to him if you have not already done so, if you're new. Uh, but a couple of things. The last few weeks on Sundays, Brother Justin and his wife, Jackie, are hosting Bible trivia. It is so much fun. I don't even know what to say. 
I, don't <laughs> I, I just had so much fun doing it and uh i've been getting smoked each week but this week i'm um, i'm coming i'm coming with it <laughs> it's, it's, so, fun. it's fun for us yeah i bet you, sound, you guys have a great time hosting it like i said my wife sits with me uh each week and you know she's not too uh knowledgeable on on the on, on any of the, on the scriptures but she actually giggles uh quite a bit because you guys are are a good host so she doesn't mind sitting with me while i do this it's it's uh three weeks in a row now it's kind of already become a tradition in our house so uh, this is here to stay, but yeah, so uh, 8 30 central 9 30 uh, Eastern Standard Time uh, You'll just go over to the Christian truthers channel and just uh, click on this and uh, When it starts, he'll be ready to go So be here. I'll be there. I'll be here, but as a contestant uh, and uh, Justin and Jackie his wife Jackie will be hosting it great time. So join us there, uh, but also um, brother Justin just put out the testament of judah i know he showed this earlier but i know a lot of you are, are just joined us the testament of judah he's been doing the um the 12 patriarchs and um uh, this is installment of the four so he's done reuben simeon levi and now judah judah and levi are probably my two favorites right here so me too uh, so far i un i unfortunately have not been able to watch this i was gonna put it, it was on my list of things to do today but i ran out of time with the doing the study for this today and uh, but the good news is I get to enjoy it on Shabbat, so I'm gonna be watching it uh, probably tomorrow, uh, kicking my feet up. So awesome. Anyways, uh, what else? What else is going on here? Yeah, so Bible trivia and Testament of Judah. You guys need to check it out. And then um, the only other thing with my channel again, if you've just stumbled upon this, just go ahead and uh, click subscribe. But um, was it? Yeah, two weeks ago today I put out the Beast. Of Revelation um, unlocked the Beast of Revelation for part two. In that video, I told I told you that part two was going to be the Mark of the Beast, and then part three was going to be the um, the uh, Mystery Babylon revealed. But I really felt called that we need to establish the Beast and establish um, the the Harlot first before we establish what the Mark is, because those two pieces of the puzzle are needed to be understood. So part two is the is mystery Babylon revealed. I'm working on that now. It should be out next week sometime. So um, anyways, so that is that. Let's hang out with the chat. Those are so good, man. The mystery Babylon stuff is so, so good. So good. Speaking of um, the game show, I never actually explained to anyone why I have – Abraham and Valley Pete. Well, for those of you guys who play the quiz, you already know why. But those are actually our first two weeks winners. And last week we had two winners of two quizzes. And I haven't updated my board yet. So that's why I have the uh... – so you get a chance at winning a Christian Truthers T-shirt of your choice. Plus you get to be on the marvelous, luxurious uh, <laughs> board of honor. So come play. And I have, I'll say this publicly. I have um... – because uh, Justin did a video, was it last week or two weeks ago now? I can't remember. It's Maybe it's been two weeks now. But but Justin basically explained my situation with, with YouTube, um, how they're messing with the, the ad revenue. Long story short, I was talking to Justin. I was like, you know what? I think I might just have to go back to work. And I think I think maybe Justin prayed about it, and he was like, no way. He did a video explaining. Basically, uh, YouTube is, is basically – was it shadow banning? Is that the term? Yeah, that's the term, yeah. So – you search parable of the vineyard none of my videos come up so and if you look at the analytics before they did whatever they're doing to me almost almost 70 percent was like 65 percent of the the views on my videos were non-subscribers now it's like 80 90 percent subscribers and only like less than 10 to 20 percent not subscribers why because people aren't finding me anymore right. long story short um anyways you guys responded to that with with assistance and, and patreon i want to give back and after that first uh, uh first month of patreon i think i'm gonna get a couple of these bro so that we can maybe give away some some suffers oh uh, yeah for yeah. as the prize is coming up so not let's see so probably in maybe in two weeks we'll be able to do something like that so i'm we'll, sure uh, vision will give us a bulk discount right will he i will think he out there maybe? <laughs> or maybe or also uh and he's got a, a couple new uh a new book, uh, Ha'avoth, it's the fathers, uh, and a lot of writings from the early church fathers, really interesting stuff in here. Really? Uh, and I just got this too, because you know, if the power ever goes out, 
this is really nice to have all the tour portions already separated out as yeah. well. I get that for sure. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, it really interested to get to dive into uh, both. Um, and uh, just while we're speaking about it, I know a lot of you have been uh, asking us about the, the recent stuff going on with, with Dr. Pigeon and some of the allegations. Um, you know, he did uh, put up, uh, if you want to look at, go to type in Sefer blog, there was a blog that uh, he, he wrote about one of the books that was in question that he, um, that he published. So uh, it's called this, the Sitre Torah, which it's a great book, but unfortunately the, the, the first couple sections, there's some, there's some stuff that we also don't agree with, but the rest of the book is amazing. So I'm not, you know, tossing my book aside or anything, but just that, that first portion, uh, there's some, some really different stuff on there, but he's publicly, uh, I think he actually said he pulled that book off the shelf now. So anyways, um, anyways, so let's see. Uh, it's a good book, otherwise. I mean, I, the yeah, it is. Patriarchs is in there. It is that, and I think the Apocalypse of Abraham that we read from tonight yeah. is in there. Mm -hmm. A couple of the books, but um, anyways, oh, let's see. Let's see. Dale Miller, the Vatican is Mystery Babylon. That is a very common uh, understanding. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that explain that, and um, if you would, the the video that I just mentioned. Um, the beast of revelation revealed, please watch that. It's like 22 minutes and, um, it'll show you. And then next week we'll have, um, we'll have the video explaining exactly who mystery Babylon is by scripture only. And I think that's what we need, need in these days. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's one of those things where I've seen people make a really good case for, for actually several different mystery Babylon ideas. I've seen someone make a really good case for America being Mr. Babylon, and they spent three hours doing it. Um, I've seen people make cases for the Vatican, of course. Um, but once you see the number of scriptures and how just it, it's just it's like one of those things where once you once you see it, it's just you can't unsee it. There's just too much, too much data. If you just do like a, a very unbiased like don't I, I don't see any reason why anyone should be emotionally invested in their own understanding of this prophecy or that prophecy since none of us can be 100 percent sure until you know we we receive a prophecy of our own or or you know yeshua comes or whatever but i think once you just weigh the data uh personally and that's how i make my decisions on what i think is most likely to occur with prophecy is just by weighing the data I just think the scales tip way too strong and way too hard right. towards Adam's understanding, uh, not not his understanding, but what Yah has shown him and subsequently shown us. And now everything I read all the time now, when I'm go we're going through Isaiah in, the, in a, a men's study that we're in, I'm going through um, Jeremiah, I'm going through Hosea, I just, now, now I see it everywhere and it just fits right perfectly in line with um, the idea, so... I, I, I thank you for that, bro. Um, True, and and this is a <laughs> you guys. This is a, actually part of my script for <laughs> for the video come out. I've never shown this shown one of these before. So um, th let's just take one quick snippet, right? Mystery Babylon, that great city, right? So let's just go through some of these verses. Revelation fourteen, and there followed another angel saying, "Babylon is fallen, is fallen." That great city, just remember that term, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Revelation 17, 18, and the woman which you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Revelation 18, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, sending afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, right? That great city Babylon, that mighty city for one hour is thy judgment come. Revelation 18, the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Um, so here, uh, many have concluded that, that, I'm sorry, that this must mean the Vatican as they are dressed in purple and scarlet, and it could make sense if... This verse is isolated, and we will expound on this momentarily. However, in the uh, in the previous video, we showed unequivocally that the Vatican, also known as the Holy Roman Empire, 
is the beast of Revelation, not the great harlot who are we are discussing today. So if not the Vatican, then who, according to the scriptures? And then here you go, that great city revealed, Revelation 11, 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Adonai was crucified. Brothers and sisters, where was Yeshua crucified? He was crucified in Jerusalem, right? Now listen to this. Isaiah 1, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Except Yahuwah Sebaoth had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of Yahuwah, ye rulers of Sodom, right? Spiritually, it's called Sodom in Egypt, where our Adonai was crucified. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. So that's just a little snippet. And that shows you right there, right there by the scriptures alone, tells you who that great city Babylon is. It's the city where our Lord was crucified. Yeah, and that, that's what I like about it the most is just that it's only scriptures interpreting scriptures. There's none of this uh, sort of exegetical eschatology is what you would call it where, you know, Oh, this verse kind of sounds like a helicopter. So maybe it's talking about that. It's none of that. It's was strictly scripture interpreting scripture. I know everyone claims to do that. Um, but just, just watch it. Like I just watch it. <laughs> um, it's, it's so good. It might catch you by surprise. If you, even if you're hard set on, on something else, just give it a try. Pray about it. Amen. Thanks for that. And then again, the the where a lot of videos teach about they're dressed in scarlet and purple. If you just look at that verse, totally get it. I totally get it. You see the cardinals and the whatever they are dressed in, in all in scarlet and in purple. You're like, makes sense. The Vatican's decked with gold and pearls and totally get it. Makes sense, right? But what's interesting is you keep reading, it talks about uh you know, silk and wood and all mass man, uh, manner of vessels of ivory and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Well, guess what? And this is what I'll go over in this video. If you go through first and second chronicles, the whole every the whole um, list of uh, not ingredients but merchandise for the third for the from the third, for Solomon's temple, is everything that's mentioned in Revelation 18. Then the gold, the frankincense, the odors, the cinnamon, the sheep, the oxen, the scarlet, the purple, all that, the blue, everything, the wine, the oil, the fine flour, everything is part of the temple. So, you know, does that mean that, uh, you know, that there's going to be a third temple built? I think so. And it's going to be an abomination. But please, um, when that video comes out next week, just uh, all preconceived notions, just Put it aside for a second and let the scripture do the talking. I think you'll see. Yep. Amen. Uh, a couple questions. One of them was, do you think we'll be alive to experience the greater exodus? I said, we both, we both think we will be. Yeah. Um, if you mean like in terms of time, like how much enough time, is there enough time left in our lifetime to experience it? Yeah. I think our understanding is that yes. And even some of uh, our brothers who, who think it's a little farther out, maybe another 12 years plus, even in that case, you know, y'all willing, of course, we think we'll still be around for it. I do. I agree. Next question about keeping the Shabbat. Didn't John say Jesus is our Sabbath and we can use Sunday as a day of worship. Love you guys. You have anything for that, Adam? Oh, I'm sorry. I was typing in chat. I apologize. Oh, no. this, is why, this is why I hardly ever go in chat because I can't do two things at once. Yeah, no. All right. Well, without pulling up all the scriptures here. Um, I don't think that's in John, actually. I think you're referring to the book of Hebrews, more than likely, uh, where it talks about striving to enter into the rest and, and mentions that Messiah is that rest, or so so striving to enter into the rest of the Messianic age is the way that I interpret it. Um, if you look at um, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, is it's clearly depicted in the book of Exodus and also again in the book of uh, Numbers, I believe, and maybe even again in Leviticus, that the the purpose of the, sub, the Sabbath is to rest from actual work, like labor, like the kind of labor we do to feed ourselves, to 
to shelter ourselves, to take care of our family. So in the six days of creation, we see the Most High showing us an ex in his own example that he works, he's doing something, he's working, he's working, he's working. And then on the seventh day, he's resting from his actual labor, his actual work. So in today's world, we would look at going to work, whatever that looks like, whether you're a farmer or a salesperson or worked at Wendy's, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're, whatever you have to do or choose to do or get to do for work, the seventh day, as Yah models for us, is our day to rest from that work. So when the book of Hebrews kind of uses works as a poetic in its poetic sense to say that uh, we're resting we're going to be resting from our works and resting in Messiah um, but that is actually sort of uh, a play in my opinion sort of a play on words because he's actually referring to works of the flesh works of of this life and we're striving to enter into that rest which is the rest that's to come in the millennial kingdom um, where we we all are going to be doing his will constantly. We're, we're resting in him. But even that spiritual understanding and even understanding the higher spiritual implications of what that possibly could entail, it doesn't change the fact that we still have to work six days a week. We have to, right? We have to go to work. We have to use our hands, our minds. We have to go places we don't want to go and do things we don't want to do for the purpose and benefit of eating and drinking and feeding our families and protecting. So, even if we even if we say that you know the Messiah is our Sabbath, and I'm not really sure how you apply that to actual daily living, um, and that's what that's one of the reasons why I I was so blessed to to finally realize how beautiful Torah is, is because it actually gives us instruction that's very very practical, very day to day, very on the ground with your hands, you can actually you can actually see how doing the will of Yah physically and mentally and spiritually, we can't leave out the spiritual aspect of it because then we're just we're just empty empty shells faking the funk here. We have to have the spirit of it too. We can see how doing those things actually does set us apart and make us holy and does please the Father. The scriptures actually tell us there's a video on, on my channel called Watered Down Milk. And in that video it, it de we demonstrate how the scriptures tell us that we are to purify ourselves and that we are to do righteousness and not to be deceived if we don't do righteousness. We're not righteous according to scripture, that we are to come out, to be holy, to be separate, and that we do have decisions to make about how we're going to live our lives. So we can't just we can't just spiritualize everything and say now we don't need to do anything anymore uh, because according to scripture, it, those those people who are who are living in a in a, in a in a profane way, a way that's not set apart. There's th those become vessels of dishonor instead of vessels of honor. Those are not those are not uh, rewarded, blessed, protected, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, anyway, that's kind of a long answer to a short question. And I would just encourage you. There's there's quite a few videos out there about about the Sabbath. I think One Nineteen Ministries has a pretty good one. Do you have anything else you want to add, Adam? No, I think you covered it pretty well. I, I really do. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, well, actually, yeah, you know, you know, the, the whole Yeshua is my rest. I'm going to rest in him or every day is a Sabbath, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not serving him the way he commanded it to be, you know, period. And, it, you know, you have to wonder, we don't actually see the kind of doctrines that deceived the people back then. To where, you know, like Elijah said, Elijah said in, in uh, 1 Kings 18, 21, uh, it says, And Elijah came in to all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If Yahuwah be Elohim, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Why? Because they were not only serving Baal, but they were still doing the, the you know, they're going through the motions and whatnot. And who knows what kind of, what kind of uh, doctrines of men taught them that, you know, maybe they taught them that, hey, those commandments, that was only for the our fathers that came out of Israel, you know, came out of the land. It was only, you know, for a certain time period. We're different because, I mean, look at us. We have Yerushalayim now. We're protected and, you know, all the, who knows what it, what it was. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing over and over again. It's, 
you know, at the end of the day, are you going to keep his commandments or not? And, and that's what, you know, he says in, in Deuteronomy 8, you know, I brought you out of the wilderness to, to and I made you hunger and, and I, I tested you and proved you to see what was in your heart, to see if you'd keep my commandments or not. And here we are in the same time period, you know, we're in the wilderness of, of the world. And we have doctrines of men all over the place that tell us, oh, you don't need to do this. Oh, you don't need to do that. And almost talking so much that like, it's almost like, oh, maybe doing works is bad. Like mm -hmm. maybe if I, if I want to do good works, is that a bad thing? Am I, am I, am I, am I, have I fallen from grace, you know? But anyways, right. um, yeah, I, I, I fully believe that, you know, that, um, well, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? And then and then if you look at the prophecy, someone brought up a good point as well about not buying and selling in the mark of the beast. Um, that's another important aspect to it as well. If you do a, a study on the mark of Yahuwah versus the mark of the beast, you see that that mark is actually determined. Which mark you have is determined largely by uh, whether or not you profane the Sabbath, actually. Um, yeah. And um, on the Sabbath, we're not supposed to buy or sell, for example. And it says if you have the mark of the beast... Uh, if you don't have the mark of the beast, rather, then you can't buy or sell. Well, that works together quite quite naturally. Um, so, yeah. And it's also, also interesting. I started just while you're on that thought. It's also interesting that in the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins, what does it say? It says, go to them that buy and sell, right? <laughs> right. But in, in another important aspect to consider, let alone the fact that, you know, the fear of Yah uh, accompanied by just our deep desire to please him and and walk in his path. Those are all really great reasons to to repent, to to shuva, to change direction and change our mind about the way we do things. But on top of that, there actually is a wonderful, wonderful blessing that's attached to it. And um, so far, we've we've asked people, hey, just try it out, just give it a whirl. If if you can, if you're in a if you're in a place uh, where you can take Saturday and literally buy nothing, sell nothing, you know, go nowhere really. I mean. Um, don't don't cook anything just get ready the day before and just literally literally just relax all day and just eat and hang out with y'all be in the word spend time with your family just give it a whirl and just see if y'all blesses it you know and um i haven't heard anyone come back yet and say oh it was so terrible <laughs> you know everyone says that it was the highlight of the week and it, it continues to be the highlight of of our weeks at least in my I, family i agree i agree and and really those are like the big days where i feel like knowledge of his word is revealed i feel like i feel like he honors that i feel like because we because we keep the fourth commandment by remembering his his sabbath and, and keeping it set apart that he in turn blesses us with what we're seeking for and i think a lot of us are seeking for understanding of his scriptures to know his scriptures to not only be hearers of the word but but also doers to walk it out and i feel like it's like a a synergizing thing it's like you know we see in um you know in the book of hebrews in the hall of faith right all these men of faith right but what did they each do they each stepped out and and, and acted they 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 responded to that faith by by doing something right and and this is what our call is to do is to is to believe with all of our heart soul and mind and to love yahuwah with all of our heart soul and mind and love our love our neighbor with all of our heart soul and mind and guess what the great news is that's those two commands are, are broken down into 10 commandments which are broken into many other commandments that help us because we have a loving father you know he gives us good doctrine right uh proverbs 4 2 i give you good doctrine forsake not my law right mm -hmm. and so Obviously, if you were with us for the for the duration of the night, you saw, you know, just exactly the importance of the law, especially in these in these last times. So, yeah. but, great question, uh, by the way. Great question. Great, great question. Just want to shout out, thank you to all the moderators that are here: Larry Newport, Aaron James, Breaking Beans, uh, David Shearer. Man, he uh, David Shearer is here every single week, and. <laughs> He's always there, man. I was just about to say Jason T, but actually, I don't think this. I think this is the first night I haven't seen Jason T. Wow, where is Jason T? And, and David Shear has been on, um, showing up to my live streams as well every time. Oh, awesome! I'm sure as as many of these others also have. So, not taking away credit from the rest of you guys. <laughs> sister Psalm 119. Good to see you, sister. Always, always has the best verse. Okay, what does she put up now? Yeah, that's right. To the Torah and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because they have not light in them. Isaiah 820. Thank you. Amen. Chris Amen. Rock, Aqua Leads, welcome. 
Thank Bowman82, the Shabbat Alaka Laka, Larry Newport. Yanni and Sophia, hey, welcome. Good to see you all. Who else is here? Donna, Donna Flintage. Uh, Flintage. Is that, is, it was that, it, did you confirm? Is that her? Is that, is that who that's whooped Donna? Me? That's the t shirt winning Donna. Yes. Man, she crushed it. She's one. She crushed you, dog. I know. Ashton L. Uh, I'm excited for the tour portion. Awesome. Yes. And again, we're going to be doing the tour. Uh, I'm going to be doing the tour portion here in just a bit when we when we finish up. I'll just have to use the restroom for just a moment and then we'll, I'll uh, jump back on. Uh, Deb Perez, welcome. Uh, Peter Garcia, Woody Wiz, Stephen Schofield, LaDonna Teague, It's Witsit. Uh, he asked a question about the pre-Adamic area. Do you, I don't know anything about that. Do you? Uh, that's that's the whole. Uh, that's a, that's kind of a Steve Quayle arena. I don't really. Is it like the same stuff that like? I don't uh, get down with that personally. What's his name? Um, the guy that does all the drawings and sees all the pictures and the drawings. What's his name? I don't know. How about how we were all like fallen angels and like? No, I don't. I don't. Is that is that that is? I don't know about that guy, but it's just the idea that there was a whole other history and a series of events that took place before Adam was made and put in the garden. Okay. Oh, it, the, like oh, the how he had a, a wife before Lilith was like his first wife. Well, even before that, just an idea that there was another, there was other stuff going on on the earth for a long period of time before, before that was all wiped out and Adam was put in the garden, and it's kind of you know. Um, anyway. I, I personally don't. I, I don't get down with that personally. Yeah, I don't either. I, I don't. I don't know much about it. Um. Uh. Let's see. Oh, Catherine Red Shalom. Was Eve's name actually Chawa? Chua. Uh, Chawa. Yeah. Well, it's, it's Chava. Chava is. I think is actually how it's supposed to be pronounced. In uh, I know in the Sefer it's it's C H U A H. Like that. Oh, then, then Hua. Okay. Hua. Um, and then she also asks, also, the Adam and Eve videos mentioned Friday as one of the week, one of the days of the week. Are these mere translation errors? Yes, I believe so. I, I think it, it's the same stuff we see. Um, we've talked about this many times, but like a lot, a, a lot of seminaries will teach their pastors and pastors go on and teach this. You know, the reason that we, the, or the reason that the world uh, gathers uh, to church on Sundays is, you know, one of the verses is Acts 20, um, verse seven, I think, where it talks about how they gathered on the first day of the week, but you actually go and look at the Greek and there's not first day of the week is actually supposed to read Sabbath. So it's supposed to be one of the Sabbaths they, they got together. Um, so just, just like the KJV has been altered. Um, yeah, you know, I, I believe that that was translation translated incorrectly, that it, it should have been, it shouldn't have been Friday. It should have been the sixth day, you know? So, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure they saw sixth day and said, Oh, I'll just put Friday. Cause we know it is Friday now. Uh, I think it was, it's that simple. Um, so good question. Uh, let's see. A lot of questions. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm just, they're not all in caps. They're just kind of hidden in there. Yeah. If you guys can. Uh, moving forward, we're not going to get to too many more tonight, but uh, in the future, if you can just type in all caps, it's the one time that typing in all caps is acceptable. Because <laughs> otherwise, it looks like you're yelling at us, right? Um, just so we can so we can pick it out. We can't tell. It's hard to tell the difference of just chat between brothers and sisters and a question. Oh, Sherry Stadel, what's going on, sister? If you guys would all would actually just pray for sis, sh can't talk, sister Sherry Stadel. Uh, she's going through some some trials right now. I know we all are, but um, she's going through some pretty pretty big trials. So if you can just keep her in your prayers for just a moment, um, I know she'd appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's see what else. Uh, what is the best New Testament version? Um, this best is kind of a. Uh, None of them. Are, none of them are perfect. Yeah, they come we, to realize that. We, I, when I'm reading, uh, when I'm reading my on my own, I usually read the Sefer version. If I'm reading on my phone, you can actually use the Sefer for that too. If you have the app, but I also use the Tree of Life version. There's another one, one of my preferred uh, versions. And then if you know, or King James is fine too. All I know is, um, regardless of what version you read. 
um, if when you, whenever you come across something that that causes you to say, hey, wait, what does that really mean? Wait, this is important. I need to understand this better. That's when you stop and say, it doesn't matter what version I'm looking at. I need to look at the Greek and uh, get the full context of the whole chapter and of the whole the whole sentence and the whole language and figure out what it's really saying. Because um, scripture interprets scripture. Amen. Regardless of what, what translation you use, it's not going to be perfect. So... <laughs> I agree. And uh, someone's asked what the Sefer is. This is the Sefer. The Sefer, um, it has the restored names, Yahuwah, the Father, Yahusha, the Son. Um, it uh, has a lot of the books that were uh, that were um, found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, Enoch, uh, Jubilees. Um, there's also books like the Book of Jasher, um, First and Second Esdras, Second Baruch, like we're reading tonight. We actually we actually read from the Sefer tonight. Right. Uh, so great book, you know, especially, you know, we, we're, we have it made right now where we can just, you know, search whatever book we want and, and read it for free online. But, you know, what if those days go away? You know, what if, uh, you know, what if the power goes out, right? If the power grid goes out and, and you know, uh, you know, and what if that power grid comes back on and the only way you're getting all that power grid is if you take, if there is a chip, right? What are you yeah. going to do then? So it'd be really nice to have one of these books. Um, but I like, uh, like Justin, I think, um, you know, I think a good Berean in these days, uh, looks at multiple versions, um, which I like to, I like to cross reference the Sefer, uh, with the KJV, with the ESV, the tree of life version. Um, I do sometimes like the RSV. Um, but you're right. When, when, in a, when in doubt, you just go to the, go to the interlinear and look at the Greek and see what that words actually is. Mm -hmm. Um, so somebody asked about um, the stars falling to the earth. And do, do we think that those are the angels falling? Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Simply put, yes, the, the luminaries are, are alive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's shooting stars. I think that's I think that's uh, uh, like like Hasatan said, you know, when, when uh, Most High said, you know, from where do you come? He said from going up and down and and, and to and fro from the earth. Uh, I think that's them moving around. I really do. Mm -hmm. Now, and for for those of you that that understand that we believe in a geocentric Earth, as described in well this book and many other books, and of course the the sixty six book canon itself describes a uh, a motionless Earth set on pillars with a firm firmament, you know, uh, like a tent spread over. Um, that changes everything, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, tattoo artist, I look into the Shepherd of Hermas at some point, maybe. Actually, I think that is in this book. Ha'avoth, I think it's in here. Uh, let's see. The visions of Hermas, the commands of Hermas, the, sim the similitudes of Hermas are in here, but not the Shepherd of Hermas. Interesting. The Apocalypse of Peter's in here. The Ascents of Yaakov. We have uh, Polycarp in here. The uh, Epistle of Barnabas. Anyways, interesting book. Yeah, I haven't I haven't read or tested any of those writings yet. So I haven't either. Right. That, that's the yeah. Um, word of caution. We haven't we haven't tested those books. But it's books that I want to test. So, for sure, Heather and Gary Mack also ask if we would pray for them as well. And here's an interesting question, Justin. You and I talked about this almost two years ago now. It feels like, but and I think we had different answers then than we do now. <sighs> Clay Blackmore asks, "Is it okay to go to church?" I think it's okay. And. I think two years ago, what did we say? I think what I was so impressed with your answer, you know, because you and I both were, we were like, we're, you know, going to church, but I feel like every time I leave there, like, it's not what y'all is calling me to do. But we're like, you know, maybe we can be a light to those people in church. Um, it's hard. It's rough. It's rough. I don't, I don't go anymore. I don't either. And um, it's, it's, it, I tried to keep going as long as I could. Um, and it got to a point where I just, 
it was painful. It was so painful to sit there and listen to the, I, I mean, I, I don't mean to be mean or insensitive or anything like that, but it's just garbage that's coming from the pulpit. And then you, then I try to say, well, so, you know what I'm going to do anyway, I'm going to stick around and I'm going to be a witness to other people and invite them into Bible studies. And I'm going to try and talk with them and hang out with them and, you know, maybe talk to them about Torah a little bit here and there, and maybe eventually I'll work some people. It, if you have no other possible way of reaching people and you feel called to do that, then um, be obedient. You know, for me, um, it people people get pretty upset when you contradict <laughs> what they've been taught. Um, most of us have been kicked out of churches for just simply asking the wrong questions. Um, but for me, I, I honestly feel like, and I'm not saying this is 100% true at all times for every person, but for me, I honestly feel like if I were to start going to church on Sunday morning, I would be kind of engaging in something that is, it's like mixing it would be like the apostles after receiving the Holy Spirit going and going to sit down and listen to the Pharisees preach and like try to get yeah. them from them. I could see them going and like try to convert others to the truth, but you know, it's just like it's just like the same reason we shouldn't be sitting around watching TV all day and listening to secular music because it's like this stuff is going in and going in and going in and going in. You know, is it eventually going to affect you? Well, again, we've seen brothers that we think are were on fire for 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 Yah that have even just merely spoken to other people that don't have the spirit, and all of a sudden they were changed. They were influenced completely by this person, right? Right. So right. you know, is it like oh, you're going to go to church and in, in, in you know, I, I don't think any of us are saying that. You know that. But if, if we know that what they're teaching is wrong, why are we just going to go? I don't know. I, I, but I can definitely see the be a light in a dark place, you know, argument for going there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for a lot of us, you know, and I see a lot of people in, in chat, you know, this is church. Um, and, yeah. you know, it says for say not the gathering together of yourselves. I, you know, are we, be able, are we able to hug and, and shake hands? No. But, you know, we, we, get to, we get to hang out with one another. We get to um, – sharing the word together well are we not the scattered sheep are we not yeah. the scattered tribes right yeah um we're not going to be gathered like in a, in a permanent way until the coming of the messiah so certainly we should all if we can um find local fellowships to engage with home churches whatever start one if you want you know um if you can do that then that that's wonderful that's awesome i don't think anything beats having actual local people but if you're going to sacrifice good doctrine, uh, which, by the way, according to Scripture, good doctrine is Torah. <laughs> if you're going to sacrifice that just to be around people who also kind of believe what you believe, but not really, I don't see the point. I don't see the point of it. I don't either. I don't think we're forsaking get, gathering together. We're gathered together several nights a, several nights a week um, between Adam's channel, my channel, and just all the other stuff going on. So. Yeah, Stephen Schofield says rock and roll entertainment and a watered down message. That's that's all you get. Painful, painful. It, it unfortunately is. Well, we're coming up on hour three, so I think we should wind down. Right. Um, what did uh, uh, your wife asked if you and I have any prayer requests? Oh, really? Yeah, that was one of the that was one of the all all caps. Man, what's your prayer request? Well, now that we're talking about it, honestly, the multitudes of people that are just stuck in the lie, I, I, people that believe in Yeshua but don't understand, um, I just pray that a good portion of those people can wake up b now before it's too late and to seek the Father with all their heart and seek true repentance and and have a desire for His commandments in their heart. I, I, and especially those that you know, have separated from us over the last year or so. Um, there's a lot of brothers and sisters that I really, really liked that, you know, just would probably spit on us right now, prefer to spit on us rather than hug us because why? Because we believe it's right to keep his commandments and for whatever reason that offends them. I, I just, my prayer, I'm long-winded. My prayer, honestly, is that, that 
these people, you know, that Abba gives them the same understanding that he gave us. But for whatever reason, remember, it's it's he that changes the mind and the heart, you know. But for whatever reason, maybe their heart isn't ready for that for that wisdom. And I just I pray that that changes is that's my prayer. Amen. It is. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yeah, I have a hard time asking for prayer requests. Uh, I mean, I have a hard time asking for prayers just because. I, because you're so blessed. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I I really feel ridiculously blessed. But I, I really, I really know that even if I was living in a cardboard box, I would still feel ridiculously blessed just because I'm doing what I feel like I'm doing what Yah wants me to do. He called me to to do something, and I'm I'm doing it the best I can. Um, and he's he has made that to be satisfying. The only satisfying thing I've ever really done is is this is work for Yah. Um, and all I want is his will to be done. That's it. And I don't know what his will is, and I can't presume to know what his will is. And we, we, we're we going to go through trials. We're going to get beat up. We're going to get, you know, hurt, scoffed at, spit at, ridiculed. We're going to have financial troubles, physical troubles. We're going to have all kinds of ailments. We're going to have issues. Uh, but it's all for his glory and for his namesake. And so I guess my prayer request would be that he would pour out his spirit heavily and mightily, as soon as possible, according to his plan and his will, so that his name will be praised. So that for his name's sake, that everyone can see who he is and who his people are, and we can bring glory to him. And that's it. Amen. And you, you touched on something, you know, that this is this is what you do for, you know, full time. And this is also what I do full time. And, you know, again, a few weeks ago, I, I was really questioning if that can continue doing this full time. And I just really want to thank you guys uh, for responding um, with the response on Patreon. Uh, even if YouTube completely cuts me off, um, you know, I'll be able to continue to do this full time. So you guys, well, of course, glory to you. Thanks to Justin and thanks to you guys for responding. Um, but uh, of course, all glory to, to Yahuwah. You guys have made it possible for me to continue to do this. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and even if you weren't able to help, even just honestly, just liking or disliking and sharing these videos could be all that I could ask you for as well. Because again, YouTube is no longer recommending my videos to, to, uh, to people that aren't subscribed. Um, so we can still beat that if you guys sh share these videos more often, if, if, um, now, I know sharing these live streams aren't going to be very effective because very few people are going to watch a two or three hour, you know, video. People that are really into these subjects will are the only ones watching these. But the shorter videos that we make, you know, the, the, the 10, 20, 30 uh, minute videos, share those if you get a chance. That's the only thing else I can ask. Um, so, but just thank you guys so much for responding. I, I uh, um, I'm going to do a, a video for you guys on Patreon. I, I, I just... There's so many of you responded. I couldn't send a message to each one of you individually. It was taking me too long, but I'm going to do a video thanking each and every one of you. So, um, I'll try to do at least one of those a month for you guys. So, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what else? What else, Justin? Anything else before we, uh, Nope, that's it. I don't want to keep you too late. I know you got another stream. To yeah. Do right so, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, uh, just thanks again to everyone who joined us tonight. It's always a blessing uh, just to, to see you guys in the chat, interact with you, and just share what y'all is showing us in real time. And, of course, thank you to the moderators. Your job is seems to just get harder and harder, it seems, but you guys do a wonderful job. Um, and last but not least, I just want to, and of course, invite everyone to join us for Bible Trivia on Sunday night yeah, at, amen. The, at the channel. So uh, <laughs> other than that, Adam, thanks again, brother. Tonight was awesome, bro. Your your notes were great. And Yours were too. We had the same ones at the beginning. I'm like, <laughs> check, check, check. Oh, okay. Well, that's right, why right. I like so much. No, take stupid. it away. Take it away. <laughs> anyway, so um, just real quick. Again, we're going to do or I'm going to be doing a uh, um, Torah portion right now. Actually, give me about – we're going to end this here in just a second. Uh, give me maybe about five minutes just to use the restroom uh, and uh, maybe – Give my wife a big hug and a kiss uh, for letting me do this. Oh, no, I didn't mean to share my whole – oops. There we go. For letting me stay up really late and do this. I told her I told her it was on my heart to do the Torah portions. I'm like, pick a time, either Friday night after live streams, Saturday morning really early, 
lunchtime when the babies go down for for a nap or Saturday night. She's like, dude, after the live stream, I'm like, cool. So, anyways, um, so as soon as we end this, just go back to the homepage of Parallel Vineyard, find this one right here, the tour portions, week 36. Click on that, right, and it should take you to this screen. Oh, there's already 14 waiting, right? Um, so jump in here. And uh, I'll start it uh, as soon as I can. It says 25 minutes, but don't look at that. I'll uh, I'll start it uh, here in just a few after we end. Let me just use the restroom, and then we'll uh, we'll get started there. So, anyways, um, brother Justin, thank you for for joining tonight. As always, tonight was an excellent study, and look really forward to next week. Next week, there's a lot of meat. There's a lot more um, uh, just end times meat that we need to chew on. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. Looking forward to it, brother. Jennifer Peters, I'm going to blow the horn in the um, tour portion because there's actually a part that talks about the trumpets. So well, I'm going I'm to reenact. I'm going to make the scriptures come alive. So anyways, um, yeah, so uh, I'll just do a quick ending prayer here, and we'll end uh, this evening. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, we just come before you in Yahusha's name as brothers and sisters that just love you, rejoice in your word. And as we mentioned earlier, just thank you so much for being merciful to us sinners. And we just thank you for giving us of your spirit that thirst for your word, thirst for your commandments. And we just are honestly just like Baruch and Ezra are just thirsting for your return and to be here with us and to take us and to gather us. Until that time, we just continue to thank you for allowing us to, to use technology for good to gather like this, to tr to build one another up, to edify one another, to learn together, uh, to reprove when necessary, uh, all in preparation for your return and to where we just just wait to be with you. So I pray in the, in the meantime that you show each and every, every one of us your will for us, that we may walk fully in your in your will. And, um, well, we just love you. In, in Yahusha's name, we pray and uh, Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, family. Love you all. Again, join me with the Torah portion here in just a few. And uh, love you all. Shabbat Shalom. Good night.